Peace. Mike check one two one two. The thoughts, views, and opinions are that of my own. I cannot be bought. I'm not a salesman, and now I'm not your financial advisor. This is all entertainment. Let's go. Y'all already know what time it is. Let me see that fire in the chat. Let's get the party jumping. Uh, let's go. I bring to you something special, you know. Something called the verse sense. Let's go. We're going to bring on one of the classiest mans in the game. Y'all already know money in the chat for Mr. Justin Copeland. Let's go. It's a whole vibe. It's St. Patty's Day weekend. Pour your glasses up. Let's go. In the comments, go ahead and put your Senator Day down in the chat. Put your Senator Day. What you wearing? Let's go. Don't forget to, get, forget to hit that like button and tip your bartender. Y'all drinking already or what? Let's go. Let's start it off. Peace, my check, my check, one, two, one, two. This is your host, EQ, out of Prince George's County, Maryland. Welcome to the Cypher. The Cypher is a person, place, a thing within my circumference, the understanding of the Cypher. It's peace. This is episode number seven of the Cypher, episode number four of the Ver Sense. The name of the show is the 10 most intoxicating fragrances. Why don't we just do clickbait on the planet? Y'all know y'all like those titles. Let's go. Let's say it again. The 10 most intoxicating fragrances on the planet. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all know the verses. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming in. If you're a returning member and you have your membership, thank you for returning. Let's go over the rules of this. Y'all already know what the rules are. In this particular battle, there are no clones. Don't worry, people. I know we've been talking about expensive fragrances. I am trying to set up my Clone Wars version where it will be nothing but clones and everything under $100. It's coming. Just let me get that situated. Um, We switch at halftime. He's going to do 10. I'm going to do my 10. He's going to go first at halftime. When we get to number five, I go first. He goes second. Um, for those of you all, get your pen and paper down and you don't see the name of the fragrances or you missed it, don't worry about it. I'm going to tag that rather in the comments or in the description of the video after it's all said and done. I always do that about 72 hours. So don't worry about keeping too many notes. So that is the rules of the game. <clears throat> but before we start it off, let's talk about our guy, your guy, Mr. Justin Coble. He has six years in this game. He has six 5K subs, 65.3. Let me not cut off that 300. So 65,300 subs with over 719 videos. Let's be honest, y'all. Six years in the game with consistency, reels, TikTok, it is criminal that this man is not at 100K. Let's get him there. One of the first videos that he put out, he did it in a police interrogation station. <laughs> this brother had fragrances on with light in the background on the fragrances. And I was like, not guilty, your honor. We're not going to do that. That was in September 16th for 2017. In an interrogation room. <laughs> the first time I came across this brother wasn't exactly on this date, but for point reference, on November 17, 2026, this brother lost his complete and utter mind. He said that DHP wasn't better than DHI. We know things grow, but that shows the growth of a channel. And to be honest, y'all, 
when you go see your favorite reviewers, go back and look at their old work, especially if you want to get into the game and just watch the elevation and growth. Um, it's very inspiring at the end of the day. Um, back in September, I want to say of 2018, he took a step back, sold some fragrances, did some deep thought, thought about like, why am I doing this? And I'm just chasing and I'm chasing and I'm just trying to get compliments. And he's really thoughtful in process, which goes back to what I said on my Instagram. Like, are you doing a wardrobe or are you just buying to buy? And what is your purpose? And trying to find your purpose. That kind of stops us, a lot of us, unless we just robotic with it. But he came back a couple of months later and, um, and came back and blessed us and didn't quit. This individual, our brother Justin, is a musician. He is a teacher. He is a husband. He is the commander in chief of the Fresh Squad. I want y'all to show this brother some love. He is intelligent, thoughtful, provocative. He kind. I never heard him say anything bad or flip out on nobody. I don't know, again, why he doesn't have 100K. Let's give it up. Money in the chat for our brother, also our other. Mr. Stay Fresh Productions himself, Mr. Justin Copeland. EQ. What's up, brother? Man, what? <laughs> I mean, you weren't lying. You said you was gonna do an intro. You did an intro. <laughs> I gotta give you your flowers. I gotta I get I gotta that. give people their flowers when their flowers are due. Um, especially those who put in the work. And you put in the work. I you didn't drop, that, you don't just have like, and I'm listen, I'm not throwing shade at nobody because this is a celebration but it's not like you have 100 videos with that many people like you you put in work on a daily basis i don't know how you do it teach be a husband um and do everything that you do and and i'm sure you got something to do in a little while so i'm gonna give you the floor and let you go on bro oh i'm sure you do as well man i know you're a busy man as well and you know yeah i mean busy people you you find time to do the things you want to do you know how it is i mean you've been building a channel too you're at over 12k now which i think is is amazing, but also criminally low uh, for the work that you put in and just just the energy you're giving to the community. So um, I know I should probably have some folks coming in from my channel here. So if you're here now and you are not yet subscribed, we are on EQ's channel, so you have no excuse. The button is right there. Hit subscribe and get it done. Um, but yeah, I want to just thank you for having me on. Um, like we talked about, I've been spectating this uh this series that you started and not only does it feel just needed it ne you know for many reasons it's just it's kind of just setting fire and mm. you could just see it people i see i've been getting comments and messages ever since we announced that we were going to do one together people just ecstatic and and not only just for me and you but for the ones you've already done with tltg with kuba with uh, bowtie and those are all fire you know, so you are really doing something special here. And like I said, it's just the beginning. It's only going to keep growing. So you all who are here, you guys are early adopters watching this unfold. Um, this is going to be big. This is not happening. Nobody is connecting uh, figures in the game like this, like EQ is doing with this series. And we're doing it live. We're not just doing video collabs, which is cool, but doing it live, live in person, face to face, voice to voice. Like that's not happening anywhere else. So I got to give you your flowers, man. That's just appreciate an honor you. to be here. Appreciate you, brother. Um, Before we always say, let's pay the bills. What was your center today? Tell the people what your center today was. You know, today I went with something I wouldn't normally wear this casually, but I just felt like smelling it. So I put it on. This is a classic. It's Royal Oud mm. from Creed. No Probably. I mean, if you're asking me, it's the best from the house. Mm. Um, And I know people would disagree with that. And there is one fragrance that they would put above it. You already know what it is. We don't need to say it. Uh, but there's a few that I, I definitely like, even just a little bit under this. But for me, this is the best from the house. Uh, mm -hmm. This is just so classy, that kind of dry, spicy woodiness, almost a little bit fresh, um, almost a piney feel. But it's just super classy. Again, I would typically dress it up a little bit more, but hadn't worn it in a while. I just felt like wearing it on a nice day out. So that's me. Creed Royal Oud. Well... <clears throat> My center of the day is one that I smelt back in 2022, and I inevitably got me a bottle maybe about 30 days, give or so ago. Mm -hmm. And this fragrance is one I talked about last night on Ross on Ross's channel. And this is just very cooling. And this is from um, Terry Hermes, 
and this mm, is Ogivre. That's the one, man. This is this is the one. The, to me, this is a spring summer fragrance. I tell people, I don't get caught up in notes. Just what does it smell like? To me, yeah. it smells like grapefruit juice. Yeah, that's that's what it Ice smells cold. like to me. Ice yeah. cold grapefruit juice, and I love mm -hmm. the, the the taste of grapefruit juice. I drink it a lot. So for me, this is just everything that's combining gives you ice cold grapefruit juice and that's what it smells like if you're not in the grapefruit this isn't going to be for you mm -hmm. for me this is going to get a lot of burn i was planning on putting a huge dent in that yeah this year i can see um, you're already doing it a little bit even with that big bottle man yeah that's a good one that's yeah that, that's one. i mean you you can't go wrong perfect sprayer i mean Hermes puts out some good stuff. The H24 line yeah. is amazing. Classy stuff. Classy stuff. So you can't yeah. get with it. So let's just go ahead and give the people what they want. People, y'all yes, know the rules. Money in the chat for Mr. Justin Copeland. Fire in the chat for me. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all, one rule I didn't mention, which you already know, Jay, but if the folks just watching, if he puts out a fragrance I was going to put out, I can't go with that same fragrance. I have to pick something else. So Advice we're in it. Yeah. It's that number 10. The floor is yours, my brother. Let's go. Yes, the one to start with. That's always whew, what to start with. So um, I think we're going to I'm going to start with. So once again, we talk about intoxicating fragrances. We're talking about fragrances that for me, if I'm going to try to define it, it's going to be something that you just can't get enough of it. Once you get it in your nose, it's got you. And mm. Either you have to know what it is or you can't stop thinking about it. And that goes for you. That goes for whoever smells it on you, whatever it may be. It doesn't always mean you're going to get a compliment, but you're getting the interest of people, not just the attention. You're getting their interest. You're intriguing. That is intoxication to me. It doesn't have to be a particular scent profile. There's many avenues we could go. Mm. The first one I'm going to start with is what I would call grown and sexy intoxicating. And it, it will be one of two like this. In the video uh, this is coming from the house of eight and bob and this is i would say probably the most popular from the house this is one if anybody's heard of the house they probably heard of this one if not maybe a few others that are also uh, well known and pretty good but this is one of the classiest semi fougeres this is one of the sexiest fougeres i have to say and fougere is not typically what you would consider sexy or intoxicating but mm. egypt mm. I just got my little 30 mil bottle. I'm going to go through this, probably get a bigger bottle. But there's something about this that is the perfect blend of clean. So it has that clean kind of gentlemanly quality, but there is something sexy and intoxicating about it. Um, so um, I know uh, EQ, you set up this format. We're going to go through that. Um, I'm first, I think I just kind of described this and I'll keep going though. So there's a cleanliness here, lots of lavender in here, but there's this warm spiciness and almost this sweet ambery quality that gives it a lot of dimension. And it's that quality in the air that captivates, uh, not only myself, but I have gotten some decent feedback on this, um, occasion, as I said, uh, this is classy stuff. So I would tend to dress it up, but I do think it works day or night. Um, I wouldn't go any less than a, a collared shirt, open button, not a shirt like this. This is too casual for me, uh, but something a little bit more business like, but it doesn't have to be suit and tie. It could be open collar, but I would easily dress this up. I think mm. it could work as a, a work scent or it could work as a going out scent, a little bit more um, elevated, not necessarily formal, but you could pull it off formal. Um, performance on this not super strong but strong enough i would say uh, if you're going to wear it on a work day it's going to get you through the work day if you're going to wear it on a night out it's going to get you through the night it's not going to last you till tomorrow but you don't need that who needs that uh but but it'd be uh detectable you're going to smell this around you the whole time i get easily you know i could say easily seven eight hours and as you say i really stop counting after that point and uh, i pretty much smell it around me the whole time um compliment factor um i've gotten a couple compliments here again i feel like if you dress this up you increase your chances of people possibly saying something also depending on where you're going with it but i think if you wear it right you don't give it the chance to wear you and thus people kind of associate it with your entire presence in the room rather than just a scent in the room that smells good and they may not know where it's coming from um, type of person, a little bit mature, but not necessarily 
uh, super dated smelling or, you know, what people might say old manish. I know some people are offended by that. Um, I'd say I think 30 and up is really going to appreciate the scent of this the most, being that it is a fougere, which kind of harkens back to more vintage style scents. Uh, but I think a 25 year old could appreciate it. Again, it does have that kind of sweet warmth to it. Mm. That makes it a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more modern, maybe reminding them of something else they may have smelled before. But in and of itself, it's its own thing. Utterly intoxicating. Uh, when I wear this, I typically will do anywhere from, I'd say, five to eight sprays. Again, depending on where I'm going. If it's not too warm out and I'm wearing an open collar, which I, again, would typically wear it with at the very least. I will typically do one, two, three. So two, uh, one on the, each side of the back of the neck, one on the very back of the neck, and then one each inside each collar. And that'll be five. It's, if it's going to be nighttime, I'll probably add a couple more, maybe uh, make it eight. But I don't usually go too heavy because I think it's strong enough. Mm. Anyway, that's my first pick. Uh, clean, but also intoxicating. That's got to be Aiden Bob Egypt. That's a good one. You want to go classy. At least I figured, to start on, I, I, fig <laughs> I figured I figured you would do that, and yeah. I was prepared. And I'm gonna talk about a fragrance that, uh, since I've gotten it, I haven't been able to stop smelling. So okay. we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Yes. So this fragrance is it harkens back to old school, almost European perfumery. Mm -hmm. It is a fougere, but more of a modern take on a fougere. It has a booziness quality to it, a leathery undertone, very masculine mm. and not, but yet not dated. This is one that I can not stop smelling. This is from the house of Zaharov. Oh, this is second. So, hey. <laughs> and, and I say this to you and for those who think I'm doing it just because it's a battle. No, I, I love this stuff. Um, if you don't believe me, look at my first impressions right up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's my mm -hmm. initial thoughts. This, and I was like, the notes don't read fougere, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it gives off a shaving cream accord really and almost does. a cooling effect, which I believe comes from the cardamom in there. Almost yeah. like this cooling, just a cooling mint shaving cream, totally. which harkens back to a lot of the old school, like houses, like Flores. Mm. Just that old classic James Bond kind of feel. Mm. This is like the new James Bond fragrance. It has a booziness to it, but more of a like, I get more of like a, a gin and tonic. I don't really mm. get it as rum, although rum is listed. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm personally getting. Sure. So I get, but as it starts to transition and dry down, I get more of a fruity booziness. Mm. And then I get some leather and some mahogany, like dark woods. Mm. Very sexy. That gives me nightlife. This is one that is great for happy hour. I believe fall, winter, you can wear this. Occasions, you can wear this casually to me. Mm -hmm. But you can also dress this up. This is multifaceted. You can do a lot of different things with this particular fragrance. Autumn, winter, spring. I mean, a summer night. This is signature scent worthy. Let's just mm -hmm. put it there. Projection and longevity. I'm getting over eight hours. I, I don't care after seven. I don't care no more. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting into the eight, ten plus hour range of just I can get in wafts of it throughout the day, which is outstanding for those who really, really love um, performance. As mm -hmm. far as a room filler, it's not a room filler. But to be honest, people, y'all know me. I don't overspray, so I'm not trying to fill rooms anyway. I prefer mm. the people I want to smell me to smell me. I don't care about the person 100 feet from me trying to smell me. So that's mm. me personally. Um, compliment rating and compliment factor. I haven't received many compliments in, on this. I got a, oh, you smell nice. What is that? That was only like one. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those things you wear it for you. You should be wearing everything for you people in yeah. the grand scheme of it. But yeah. I wear this for me. I know when I wear this, I'm feeling classy. I'm feeling sophisticated, but I'm also feeling flirty and playful. Thank John Wick or the, or the latest mm -hmm. James Bond, not Sean Connery James Bond. That would be like old school water Portugal. Thank yes. new school James Bond. That's how I would classify this. A modern take on it. Um, type of person is for, I'm going to start, like you said, in this kind of fragrance category anyway, because when you're younger, we're a little bit 
not as mature or our mindset is different. We want the compliments and the girls and we're mm -hmm. chasing the wrong things and not always our purpose. This is generalizing people. Everybody's not like this. So I would say 30 and up. But if you're a 25 year old person, you have a nice job, you know, you have a corporate job and you want to wear something nice, modern. You don't need a lot on this. If you're at work, I would probably only do one, two sprays. I don't think you need to overspray at work anyway. Think, don't mm -hmm. be a jackass. Mm -hmm. Think about the people around you. If you <laughs> if you out in public and you're going to happy hour, take a take a little refill with you and put. A, I would probably go four sprays for a night out, four or five. I wouldn't do no more than five on this. That's just me. I think sure. when it's something with class, I want to be seen. Then I want to be smelt. I don't want to be smelt than seen. I think yes. that's the difference between class and being unclassy. Yes. So that's what I would think. So that's how to wear it. So my number 10 is from the house of Zarov and that's second soul. Man, I see people saying he hit me with the uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> hit you with that's, your own weapon. That's for sure, man. Oh, man. I did not see that coming. I um, love it. I love it. You, I, let, let me stop real quick. Yeah. You, you, you did a great job with that. Um, and I don't know how the process goes, but I know that each one of y'all are instrumental in what it comes in that just in a very few things impress me anymore. That's not a knock on fragrance companies in general. It's just a knock on my experience sure. and very few things that impress me, brother. But go ahead. You got the floor. We're going at number nine. I'm gonna let you go. off. Appreciate that, man. Uh, James Bond. Wow. I'd like to thank Idris Elba. If he was James yes. Bond, that that's what I would put, put on him. Absolutely. Uh, Appreciate that, man. Wow. Okay, up next, uh, we're going to move over to the house of Nishane. And this has got to be one of, if not the, and I have not smelled every fragrance from them, but of all the ones I smelled, I smelled at least a dozen of them. This has got to be the most succulent fragrance I've, I've smelled from them. And it is a blend that I have never smelled anywhere else um it is some elements come together that make such a unique personality it is not going to be for everyone and i think there might might be some guys who might find it a little feminine mm. uh, just because of how unusual it is but when you really spend time wearing it you realize no actually anybody could wear this but it's very particular this is a showstopper if you're asking me in every category this is called nefs mm. from nishane my goodness now granted i will i will just be transparent me and my wife wear this fragrance it smells incredible on her and then when i wear it she cannot stop following me around so we both intoxicate each other when we wear it so if there are any ladies in the audience you could totally pull this off how would i describe this this is what i would call it's sweet like sticky honey fruity fig it's a, there's a juiciness to it, but there's this dark vanilla, boozy whiskey, oud rose feel. It, it has this kind of multifaceted personality to it. And again, all these things coming together in a way that I have never smelled anywhere else mm. and utterly intoxicating. It again, checks the boxes for what should be intoxicating. Now, how would I wear this? This is going to be at the very least semi-formal for me. And I would typically only wear this at night. Not to say you can't wear it in the day. I think it does. I think it has some osmanthus in it, some kind of fruity floral quality that makes it a little kind of daytime bright in a way. Like I can see a lady pulling it off in a nice dress during the day. But for me, when I wear this, I typically do semi-formal at the very least at night. So I'm wearing darker colors. Again, college shirt, maybe tie, maybe not, um, maybe all the way up to bow tie and i don't wear bow ties that often but if i did i would definitely consider this and um yeah again on the evening out evening out this is again going to suit that type of attire like i said the more you dress it up i think the more it's going to suit you um what i say what is that i wrote something down here. i don't know what it means uh oh yeah projection this stuff is a beast i mean nishane it is no question all of their fragrances are very very powerful very dense very robust i usually again i stop counting 10 plus hours who cares like it doesn't even matter it's going to be there and if it's not there that's not that's on you <laughs> that is not the fragrance that is on you that is either you getting olfactory fatigue 
or your skin is just sucking it up like a sponge. And I'm not shaming you either way, but you just have to realize that that I think objectively speaking, this is a very powerful fragrance. Um, compliment factor. Can't say I've gotten a ton of compliments outside of my wife, like I just said. But I think as long as you don't spray too much, I'll get to that in a second. It can be moderately high for the compliment factor. I think this can easily overwhelm. And when it overwhelms, I don't see anybody telling you you smell amazing. It's just it'll just be distracting at that point because mm. it is so powerful. So keep that in mind. So strong. Otherwise, it will wear you if you overspray this thing. I think because of the uniqueness of the scent profile and the price, this stuff ain't cheap. We're talking probably 500 plus for 50 mil, which many would say is overpriced and value is up for you to determine. I think it is pretty expensive. I can't easily recommend a blind buy. Definitely sample first. But for that reason, 30 plus easy, 30 plus, you know, you got to really be able to have the disposable income if you really want to, you know, scoop up a bottle of this and not really have to blink about it. So 30 plus, And again, that in addition to the scent profile. And I would usually go no more than five sprays with this. And five would only be if I'm going to be outside for the night. If it's going to be kind of a, an evening courtyard situation or we'll be kind of walking the streets, giving it room to breathe. This thing needs that room to breathe. Otherwise, again, it will overwhelm. Um, I will do maybe three sprays if, it's, if I'm going to be inside, mostly maybe in a bar or something, or if we're going to be going over to someone's house for a little party or get together, I will go very conservative on it and it will be enough. Um, yeah, three to five for this. Otherwise, it will wear you, like I said, but I think it's a banger. Nishane Neff, so intoxicating. That is a good one. And that was one on my list. Hey. And, and, and I think one thing that makes this, and I'm just going to add on to the thing, that Osmantis really makes this. It stands out that floral, peachy feel mm -hmm. to it. It's yeah. really invocative. It yeah. absolutely is what those florals actually what drives you in. And I'm also with you. Fragrances, when you something like this is very dense and got a mm -hmm. lot going on, if you spray too much, you ruin the entire purpose of the fragrance. People barely smelling you smell better than people really smelling you. Yes. Um, and mm -hmm. that's a good one. That is a killer. I have to put that to the side because I can't pull it. Okay. But I have one that is just as powerful. Okay. Just as intoxicating. And you do not lead a lot of sprays. It's going to last all day. So let me get to it. Let's do it. This is my number nine. This fragrance, I did a first impression on it. And um, it absolutely blew me away. If you love a boozy fragrance, this one is strong. This is apple brandy. Mm -hmm. It is spicy, resinous, incense, leathery, woods. A little goes a long way. If you wear too much of this, people will think that you are drunk. <laughs> because it's going to smell like you downed a bottle of wine, but with no more than two sprays, and I really mean it, one and a mm. half to two sprays, the way it will flow in the air and hit people's nostrils is like putting your two fingers up their nose and dragging them in. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to draw them in. This is from the house of Amwaj, and this is over hey, to women. Man. This one is a power house of a fragrance and the only fragrance that can go up against nefs in this particular mm -hmm, battle mm -hmm. that made sense to me everything i said about this you get that apple that brandy is smooth it's almost this wine like oak you almost can smell the barrel like wow. the oak barrel that has been and very woody but it's leathery, it's class, it has rose, may rose to be exact, and geranium. Mm -hmm. I think geranium adds more, when I sometimes when I smell rose and geranium, it almost smells like the geranium adds to the stem of the rose, where you can smell the rose, mm -hmm. you can smell the greenness of it. I feel like when you combine it, I'm getting the whole aspect of a rose, which is why I think they just go hand in hand. Um, saffron, you get some bergamot, very fruity. May rose is already fruity. This is like a bottle of wine. I'm telling you people want really to be honest, depending on where you're going. If I'm going to a bar, I won't do no more than two sprays. Now, if I'm in a gala and I mean a party gala, there's types of galas, right? There's the presidential convict, you know, some, some big corporate gala, but then there's one where people are partying, they dressed up in suits, new year's Eve. Mm -hmm. I might go for 
And that's only because I I purposely want to overpower the room. I want everybody to know I'm there. That's yeah. the only time I'm really like, okay, because everybody's wearing a fragrance. So I'm competing with drunk people. I'm competing mm -hmm. with alcohol. I'm competing with food. I'm competing with every, people who don't wear fragrances, which is a lot of people, surprisingly, mm -hmm. are going to wear fragrances that day. So I'm competing with everything. I'm pulling out a powerhouse like this. Um, occasions. This is a nighttime fragrance. Do not go to work smelling like this. Um, <laughs> just don't do it. Um, projection longevity. This can be a room filler. It's going to leave a monster receipt scent trail. This is kind of fragrance. If I spray this down here and I come back two, three hours later, I'll still smell it in the air. It's mm -hmm. that powerful. It is a powerful fragrance. Compliment rating and compliment factor. It will get you a lot of, com it has the potential. Mm -hmm. I've received only about two, um, but the two that I got was like, what? Ooh, it was one of those. Yeah. So that was just kind of like, ooh, what are you, mm. So, so I see that as a great potential and I use the word emphasize potential. Type of person is for, this is unisex to me. A lot mm -hmm. of unwashed lady scented bottles happen to be unisex this is one where a lady you go into a gala too you dressed up at night or you go into a bar or cigar lounge you like to play with the boys put this on this will work for you guys if you wear it, it's more of a flirty kind of feel but very powerful a confident man because it also has feminine aspects to it um but i'm gonna see anybody probably 32 and up like you you're gonna have to be a little mature to wear this it's extremely boozy how to wear it, I already told y'all. Y'all don't need a lot of sprays. That is my number nine, and that's Unwash Overture Woman. Whew. You know, man, I remember when you reviewed that. I remember seeing your video when you did that, and I think I maybe, maybe left a comment. I don't remember, but I remember you at least saying, like, this beats the men's. To, to me, just yes. initially, it has more wearability. More yes. wearability. I see more what wearability. You mean. Yes. Um, it, and I love the, well, I don't know. Somebody <laughs> reach for <laughs> yeah, man, uh, but, 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 but yes, but yes, it, it, it's up there, has great wear. But have you smoked it yet? No. All right, we'll talk offline. Yes. I got you. I got yes. You. We'll talk. Yeah, I've been, been yeah. slacking on it's it. It's powerful, though. Yes. Brother, it's powerful. You don't, you don't need much. Probably one. Just start off with one and a half and let Gray smell it and just and see what happens. Just it 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 is it can be too much. It can really wear you. So you have to and you're gonna be extremely boozy. So you have to be in that environment. You definitely have to do that. What you got for me on um, where we at? Number eight. Number what you eight. Got for me? Okay, so man, you hit me with a big one there. Um, so this fragrance, uh, a little bit of an audible, perhaps. Um, this is rich. This is it has an edge to it. This is one that I recommend you sample it. But when you do and you spray it on your hand, do not do this mm. in the first five seconds. And I could say that about a lot of fragrances. In fact, we could say that about any fragrance. Like doing that, you're going to, that's not real. That's not how you're going to wear the fragrance. Again, we don't spray it up the nostrils. So with this one, you will probably regret it. You might ruin your experience with this. There's a booziness in here as well. Uh, rich cognac. Um, this is a little bit animalic. Like I said, it's pretty edgy. There's a darkness here. But there is this kind of sweet, warm, resinous feel, which is very much um, characteristic of the house. They're always going to have some kind of resins in here. And this is the counterpart. This is Amouage Overture, man. <laughs> mm. Somebody was going to pull it out. I know. Somebody, I know you, I know you got pull it, it too. It, it was sitting on the sidelines. It was just ready. Like, put me in, coach. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I wasn't going to do this next. But you went with that. It's like, man, I got to do at least the counterpart. Because there's a there's few things that go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Overture Woman, at least from what I've heard, not even just from you. I've seen across mm. the community people are saying how amazing Overture Woman is. So I do need to put my nose on it. But the first time I put my nose on this, I will say I did it exactly the opposite in the way that I just said. It was up close and it was on paper and it blew me away, blew mm. me away. And at the time, this was a couple years ago, it was not available in North America. So I bought this from England. I paid. I did the same thing. <laughs> yes, I paid Yeah, more than you would pay today to get this. From overseas and i think it's worth every penny so um i basically already described the scent of it boozy kind of warm spicy animalic 
Uh, there's this rich kind of almost ambery resinous feel to it, but it is a little edgy. Again, there's a funk in there. Um, because of this scent profile, even just the bottle itself, you look at a bottle and you just kind of know how you're supposed to wear it. This is formal. At least if you want it to really work for you, or I'd say work with you, not for you, with you. If you want this to work with you, this will be your, uh, your, kind of your right wing person on your uh, night out. But I would do it more formally. Definitely dress it up. Doesn't have to be, again, suit and tie, bow tie, but similar to what EQ was saying, um, I think if you did wear this to a gala, you would have a chance or something like a gala. You would have a chance to compete because mm. that makes a big difference in terms of where you're going. It's one thing to not want to overpower. But if you're going to a place where everyone is going to be competing for scent, then, yeah, you need something to compete. Otherwise, you're going to get swallowed up. So I think this would be a great contender for that because it is powerful, you know, just like the, the feminine version and not feminine, but just like the women marketed version and just like pretty much all the other fragrances from the house. Uh, performance on this, again, it's no slouch. I smell it until the next day whenever I wear it. Um, again, you can stop counting at any point. We could say A plus just to be conservative because some of you guys might claim less, but I think you're not going to be disappointed with this. It will last. Compliment factor. I have yet to receive a compliment on this fragrance. Mm. However, I do think that it's one of those fragrances that as long as you don't overspray, which will again, we'll talk about sprays in a minute, people will notice. They may not say anything, but it, it will affect the way that you affect them. Mm. Like speak to them. Again, they, they'll, they might be thinking it. They may not even be thinking of it consciously. It could be one of those subconscious effects where it is affecting how they take all of you in. And again, if you are dressed, you know, to, to compliment the scent, then it just has this overall effect that they may not even be privy of. And you can just kind of leave a, a stronger first impression on people without them even saying, hey, you smell good. Because that's just the surface. Compliments, mm. that's, that's topical. You know, leaving that lasting impression where people are thinking about it. Maybe they, didn't, they couldn't get the words out. Like, I think that's more impactful if you're asking me. Um, ages and just, you know, demographics. You know, even though it is cheaper now than it was before, still not cheap. So I'd say, you know, you want to make sure you got it before you go out and try to get this. I'd say 30 plus, not only for the price, but also just to appreciate the scent. This is not your everyday scent. I would not wear this in every occasion. This is very situational. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to own a bottle that you're only going to wear maybe two, three times a year, then um, I just think that that's going to be someone who is a little bit more mature. They have other fragrances to work with and they have a more of a classy approach to what they want to wear, what they want to smell like. So a little bit more mature in that realm. And in terms of sprays, again, no slouch, three to five, similar to Neff's. I don't want to overpower people unless I'm going to be in a place where I need to do so. But if it's going to be any other regular old place in life, then as EQ was saying, I think a couple sprays, you know, or where it's just like almost barely detectable is really mm. it goes a long way and it, it affects people and it's not overwhelming it's not going to be distracting and it's especially for as edgy as this fragrance can be i think less is going to be better for you because it'll just actually i think make it more intoxicating intoxication makes people want to get closer if this thing is eight sprays strong nobody wants to get close to that anyway that's overture man absolutely and again this is one <laughs> That yes. was sitting on my table. Yes, and, I knew and, it was. And so I'm going to drop a gem real quick, everybody. So I know a lot of times on YouTube algorithm, there's mm -hmm. panty droppers and to mm -hmm. get the panties and to get the girl and to get the girl. Men and, and young men, if young men are watching, there's a few things I want to tell you. Chase When you chase your purpose and you, I don't want to say chase money, but you strive to position yourself economically in a place where you could be comfortable. That's the best way to put it, because comfortable can be anything, whatever that looks like for you. You're not less of a man than a person who makes a million dollars if you make 50. It's just yep. whatever is comfortable for you, your debt to income ratio has to match. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, women are going to come. But I'm going to tell you, men, you have to learn how to impress men. You can call them boxer droppers or whatever you want to call them. But there's a time when you walk into who holds the money across the world, who has access to money, men, 
women know this. That's why they flirt with us. Mm. They know how to get money. Men, there's a time where you're in playing, guys are playing golf, you know they're impressing other men. When mm -hmm. guys are on their car runs, you know they're impressing other men because then you're like, oh, you own a Lamborghini. I own one too. We should network. What do you do? What do I do? Yes. And this money being changed here. Strip clubs, when you walk into the party with a beautiful woman, that's to impress other men. It's not to impress other women. So there are fragrances you yeah. need to impress other men. And something as powerful as this is, and if you have an air about you, a confidence about you, will be impressionable and will stand out. That's a video for another day. I'm not going to hold y'all up. Y'all here for a battle. But that's free game. Take it or leave it. Take it how it is. But that's a good one. I like that one. Yes, um, and I'm like you. It is it is a situational fragrance. So yes. we're at number eight. That's right. So my number eight is going to be a fragrance that when I smell this and I sprayed it as you were talking and I said, if I was going to scent you, if I was a stylist and I was to scent you and you was coming to see me, this mm -hmm. is what I will call a Justin Copeland fragrance. OK, this fragrance, when I see you performing, do, I, do you still go by Justin Copeland when you when you yeah. do your group? OK, yeah. so that's the Justin Copeland I'm talking about, not the fragrance reviewer. I'm talking about the person in the club, the musician. Mm. This is the person I'm talking stoic, class, sophistication. You're in a club, so it's going to be drinks there. Mm -hmm. The smell of freshly rolled tobacco. This is tobacco and booze and leather. Mm -hmm. Smooth, dark, ebony leather. This is a underrated tobacco fragrance. Very few people talk about this fragrance. Mm -hmm. This is one I think can be signature scent. You can wear it year-round at night. And this is from the house of Javoy. This is oh. Pavillon Rouge. Yes. yes this one you. here vanilla tobacco but it's not like tobacco vanille or any other it is i would almost say this is what jazz club wanted to be mason <laughs> margella jazz club this is just a just a superior boozy tobacco just very smooth there's no harshness around this there's no rough from the alcohol isn't sharp so it's top shelf I like the smell of top shelf alcohol. So you get that. You get a smooth leather. It's not birchy. It's not harsh. It's very luxurious, very plush, like the inside of a luxury vehicle is okay. the kind of leather I get. You get a very smooth vanilla, which isn't gourmand, but it's just it it it's layered upon an infused tobacco is the best way to put it. This is rum. This is whiskey, mm -hmm. but not... Oh, Mm -hmm. A little bit of spice to it. This is just, and it has this tea note in there, this black tea note. I wouldn't call it a tea fragrance, but it mm -hmm. gives off this almost effervescent kind of just feel good part of the fragrance. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't really smell it per se, but being that it's there, I get this feel good uplifting kind of thing that I get with drinking tea. Um, this is a stunner. This is one no one talks about when they mm -hmm. talk about back over knee. Um, or vanilla fragrances. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Occasions. This is a night out fragrance. I wouldn't wear this to the job. Although, no. I mean, depending on where you work. We always, mm -hmm. and that's one thing we got to do better at. We always say, don't wear it to work. I mean, what do you do for work? Mm -hmm. are, you a, are you a bouncer? I mean, what yeah. do, you, do, you, do you work at night? Do you work at the club? Everybody doesn't work an office. Exactly. So, so it can be at work depending on what your work is. Um, it's a very smooth. There's not something like uh, maybe some fragrances that may come a little bit later that's like super boozy. It's not that. It's a very smooth, supple booziness to it. Very um, sophisticated. So, but I would say more of a nighttime scent for me, more of a mm. playful scent for me. Um, but in the wintertime, you're going throughout your day on the weekend, you can rock this and, you know, scarf up. Projection mm. and longevity. I get I get at least seven to eight hours on this. Solid seven to eight hours. It's not a room filler, but again, I don't overspray. So I mm. like that about it. Compliment rating and compliment factor. This is just one people are just going to say, if they smell you, they're going to be like, oh, you smell nice. What are you wearing? It's not going to blow people mm -hmm. away. They're mm -hmm. not going to be like, oh, my God, you're the best smelling. But it's a nice, oh, you smell nice. What are you wearing? Yeah. So I have received some of that type of person is for because of the booziness. I believe, you know, 27 up. It depends on what your style of dress is. Do you like to dress up? Are you a stylish young individual? 
Mm. or you just kind of jeans and t-shirts. It all, you know, it all depends on the kind of person you are, but I'll just go 30 and up on most of these fragrances that we'll probably talk about for the boozy aspect of it. Um, and how to wear it, again, I go anywhere from four to six, depending on if I'm gonna be at a bar at night, close proximity, I'm on a date, I might go about four, four and a half. If I'm gonna be out through a crowd and I wanna leave a nice scent trail, maybe about six. And I like you, where to spray it at? Let me tell these people, I like going on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. I like the back of the neck because I like to get a good scent trail mm -hmm. and I will go inside so I can get my, my wasps. And if I'm at a bar, I also go behind the knees because yes. as I'm walking by people, they can catch that scent trail because scent rises. So they can yes. get that smell as you pass by tables if you want that kind of effect on people. Very classy scent. This is from the house of Javoy, and this is Pavlion Rouge. Yes, indeed. Wow. I think I, I sampled most of the house. I remember smelling that one years ago. Um, and I think it affected me roughly about the same. I remember when I sprayed it on myself, I felt like it was really capturing me. I didn't really feel like it was going to just grab everyone around me. Mm. But I knew people would at least find it pleasant. And at the very least, not offensive, but there's something special about it for sure. And when I had it, I was like, man, this is good. I couldn't stop smelling it. Again, that's what makes it intoxicating. So that's some good Absolutely. stuff, man. Um, wow. What are we going to do next? Yeah, number here? seven. Lucky yes. number seven. So mm -hmm. I like that you, uh, you're pulling out some gems, some stuff people are not really talking about. And I want to do the same. Now, I personally haven't seen a lot of people talking about this. I think I've seen one person speak about this fragrance, and he was actually the one who turned me on to it. His name is Glenn, a.k.a. Mr. Cologne. And he turned me on to this fragrance years ago. And I'll be honest, this was like four years ago. I didn't like it. Mm. I did not like it. It was not my taste. I've come back to it just in the past couple months. I got me a bottle uh because i i revisited that sample that i had and a couple months ago and i'm like okay i'm ready for this it blew me away got the bottle and i've been sitting on it since and i yeah i can easily say similar to the pavillon rouge but maybe this is gonna captivate you as a wearer if you can appreciate it however i can see other people finding it a little strange so you want to be careful how and where you wear this. Reason is, is because it's pretty heavy on patchouli. Patchouli can be uh, polarizing depending on how heavy it is. It's quite heavy in here. It might be the heaviest note in this. So if you're not a fan of patchouli forward fragrances that, you know, that damp, earthy, maybe somewhat sweet, woody quality, but it can have a little bit of a, you know, that earthiness can be a little bit much for people. You're not going to like this if you're not a fan of that. But here it is blended beautifully with oud, a little bit of sweet raspberry. So there's a touch of a fruity quality in there, a um, little bit of leather, some spices. And I feel like there's a touch of an almost freshness, not fresh, but there's an open quality to it. It's not just damp earth, right? There's a there's more dimension here than that, mm. although there's not a ton of notes, but it's fine. The way it comes together is is quite different. This is coming from... A little discussed house from Italy called Naso di Razza, and they call this Use Black. Mm. So again, this house is a little bit off the beaten path. Um, I don't really see people talking about them. And I've, I've tried a few of their fragrances, and they're all a little bit odd. This is currently my favorite one, and I think it took me some years to come around to patchouli. And now that I like patchouli, it's kind of unlocked my world. And there's other fragrances that I may have tried before that I can now come to and say I really enjoy this being one of them. So, um, again, basically already described what it smells like. There is a sweetness here. You get a little bit of that raspberry, but it's mostly damp, earthy, slightly woody uh, patchouli with a little bit of oud in there. So there's a darkness here. But I think... Uh, what I like about it is that it's not overly dense. I wouldn't call it the strongest fragrance, which I think is in its favor, because if it was too strong, I think it would be obnoxious, this type of scent profile, because who wants to smell like beast mode patchouli? I think few people want to smell like that or smell that around the air. Mm -hmm. That is a, a lot to deal with. Um, how would I wear this? Because it is a little bit unsafe 
as a scent profile i do think that the more you dress a fragrance like this up the better off you'll be if you reserve this for when you're going to be dressed your best you give yourself a better chance of having it compliment you so i would typically dress it up again it doesn't have to be suit and tie but i probably will reserve it for the nighttime um, when i'm going out and because it's not super strong i think you could uh, get away with almost any time of the year i would it would not be my first pick in the summertime because there's others that are just better for when the, when there's some heat in the air but it is light enough to where you could maybe do one two sprays on a warm spring evening out and it would be just fine especially if you're going to be outside i'm um, even inside it'd be fine um i would say uh for the uh, performance again not very strong i get good longevity it'll get a good eight hours but it sits pretty close after maybe two three which again i think is in its favor because it can be a little bit daunting <laughs> when it's in the air um compliment factor <laughs> as i said this may not be one everyone appreciates i haven't gotten any compliments on it but it's also pretty new to my collection i've only worn it a couple times and um, i will say my wife enjoyed it she did find in the air when i was just kind of walking around she was like oh what are you what are you wearing because she was like i've never smelled anything like that it was intriguing which is mm. again i think a, a component of intoxication when it comes to scent there's got to be intrigue there however when she did smell it right up close to my skin it wasn't her favorite because i think the oud really came out she was like oh and she's still getting her nose on oud so that's not an objective knock on the scent Again, people's tastes will all be different. Um, for the type of person to wear this fragrance, I it is odd. However, I could see uh, you know a mid twenties guy or mid twenties woman um, enjoying this. If you can appreciate patchouli, you can appreciate this. There's really kind of a timeless quality to it. I don't see it being worn by young or old. The only reason why I might say it is for you know not anyone 21 and under is just because of how odd it is people around you may not appreciate it if you're hanging around people your age and also it's not a cheap fragrance so you need to be able to afford it too so i would say you know 25 26 going up uh from there and in terms of sprays again because it's not the strongest no don't get me wrong it's no slouch again i'll still get a good eight hours but um you know three to five three to six maybe um i don't need much and when i overspray this which i have done one time uh it it wasn't good i didn't like it i think mm. i did maybe seven eight something like that and it was too much so that's why i'm telling you if it's too much for you i don't know how it's going to be for other people because after a while your nose will start to tune it out but that's not going to happen for other people so mm. just keep that in mind um anyway good stuff definitely worth checking out worth a sample please do not blind buy this it is off the beaten path. It is not going to be a love from everybody. Uh, but if you're interested in heavy patchouli scents that have some intrigue and some depth, that's Nasa de Raza. Use black. Mm. Okay. Um, I smelled one of their fragrances. I can't think of the name. I had a sample. It was like rose and sandalwood and this blackberry kind of thing. And I love rose fragrances, so it kind of really spoke to me, but it just wasn't... Um, you know, for me to spend money on at that time, yes. but but it's a very good rose sandalwood fragrance. Okay, um, let me go with something that's gonna blow people away and something that has my name on it. So why not? Mm -hmm. This one comes from a house I I pretty much um, broke the internet with this one. This is succulent, is juicy boozy sweet almost gourmand but dries down to a beautiful woody vanilla tobacco fragrance very infused this is caramel whiskey mm. really good drenched caramel whiskey this is from the house of unique luxury mm -hmm. this is kute yeah y'all know it moved around but y'all know who was the first one really putting this mm -hmm. in. this is absolutely fantastic it is beast mode a little goes a long way when i even smell this it makes me want to go get a drink it is realistic 
whiskey. It is very like I cannot when I wear it, I cannot stop smelling it. It is one that you will get at nighttime. It's a nighttime only fragrance. Let's see occasions. Like I just said, this is a bar fragrance. This is a cigar lounge. This is leather jacket. This is going to a concert at night. You can go to a sporting event. It's just a really a playful event kind of fragrance. Nothing I would wear to work unless you work at a strip club or at mm -hmm. a bar. I wouldn't do it. It's a great date night scent, though. Don't overspray it, but we'll get into that. Projection and longevity. If you are the type that like to put 10 sprays of flamboyancy all over your body, then, you know, you can possibly get a room filler on this. But I think this is one where a little goes a long way and you're going to get a better scent trail, even in moderate, than you will with push out. But it'll push. You put enough on it, it will push out. It has potential. Um, and it lasts over 10. Once you start getting 10 hours, it doesn't matter no more. Compliment rating and factor. This is one you had a bar. And I've always told people, and I'm going to constantly say it on a live, because I don't know if this is your first live or your first time ever watching me, to way to properly wear fragrance is many ways. But one way is matching your environment. People just don't smell you. They smell the environment. Every environment has a smell. Everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you're at a bar where they're pouring drinks and you have wings or you have steaks and food is being cut, they're smelling all that plus your fragrance. Mm -hmm. So when you can match that properly, you get the best compliments out of this. So you mm -hmm. go into a bar, wear this. Cigar lounge, wear this. Uh, type of person is for because it's such a realistic whiskey kind of fragrance. It has some, some maturity to it. I would go 30 and up. That's just me personally. But wear what you like to wear, sample it, and see if it works for you. Um, so that's type person. How to wear this? Again, I don't do no more than, than four to five sprays, depending on what I'm doing. If I'm going on a one-on-one -on -one date, I'll probably only do three sprays of this. Because contrary to popular belief, we wear fragrance all the time. People... You're louder than what you think you are. Yes. That's why I don't like doing over five for most things, because we might not be able to smell it because we've ruined our nostrils and our senses. But trust me, people around you, you are loud. Just understand yes. they can smell you, even if you don't think so. So that's how I wear it. And that's my number seven. And that's Unique A Luxuries Kute. Ooh, man, that house, every I mean, every fragrance from that house is a banger. And just in terms of presence alone. Um, I got a few of them. I don't have that one, but I have sampled that one. And uh, they just, they, the performance is not even a question. So if people are worried about that, don't worry about it. And as you just said, EQ, uh, people will smell you. They will. And you, again, even if you're not sure, they will smell you. So that's a great pick. That one is real special. Yeah. See, theory. Okay. Theory coming through, supporting EQ. There we go. Uh, okay, we up to me the number six now? Number six, number six, Number brother. six, all right. Ooh, okay. I realize I got quite a bit of oud on this list. Oud for me, I guess, is very intoxicating. I didn't realize that. Oh, for me it is too. <laughs> so we're gonna, don't be shy because yeah. I'm going there as well. <laughs> yes, so this next one up, uh, oud is in the name. This is buttery. Mm. that's one way i could put it a buttery sweet rich oud this is um i think it's a an accessible oud so it was created to be accessible to i think the western nose those of us who are not necessarily accustomed to how edgy oud can be but even then some of the highest quality oud from the around the world is not always stinky and funky don't get Mm. Uh, don't get that twisted but here it's a little bit more on the medicinal side and even though it is noticeable i think the other players in the fragrance really make this profile what it is you have a lot of orris butter that's mm. bringing that buttery quality in here you have some cinnamon warm and spicy cinnamon uh bringing a warmth for sure um there's a vanilla like quality i can't remember if there's actually vanilla in here but i smell kind of that creamy sweetness uh, of vanilla which could be something mixing with that orris making it creamy and smooth it is strong um also can't forget about rose so this is technically a nude rose it is so romantic this is utter romance this is i'm going out on a date with my wife we're dressing up i'm already revealing everything about it let me just tell you what it is this is mm. Ugalore from chris collins mm. 
I, as I always say about this fragrance, this fragrance is expensive and it smells expensive. When you spray this on, you smell like, oh, I can literally smell every penny I just spent <coughs> in this fragrance. And it's by no means the most expensive, but it's not cheap, even for a 50 milliliter bottle. So we'll get to that later. But what does this smell like? Again, kind of described it already. Buttery, smooth, sweet, rich um, oud. But there's this wispiness to it. The way it kind of hangs in the air is the special magic here. That is what makes this intoxicating. It's not the making it special. It is when you walk past somebody, it is a dense cloud that moves and that does not overwhelm. And they will get a whiff of this. And I, I've definitely had some feedback on this one. Um, just passing people, hugging people, coming out of an elevator because it hangs. It, it just sits wherever you were. It will stay in a room in the air for some time. Um, so let's get into um, when I would wear this. I mean, basically, I would try to save this for more formal occasions just because, again, I'd say it's kind of romantic. Um, I like to wear, I like to dress kind of the way the bottle looks here. The it, darker colors, I think, really is going to show you what to wear with this. And I like to dress it up. doesn't have to be a tie, but I will put on a collared shirt. I do like to wear this to my performances sometimes. I will wear this to gigs. I will wear this on stage sometimes. And that's usually just for me, but I have had some, you know, some bandmates that, like make a mention of something uh, when they when they get a whiff because it smells luxurious. It smells expensive in the air. This is does not smell anything close to a mall scent. Performance on this all night. No slouch. This is the next straight. It hangs in the air like one. It behaves like one. It will stick to your skin like an x rate mm. can. Doesn't mean x rates all x rates will be super, super strong. It's not the case. But in this case, it is. I can easily get 10, 12 plus. No problem with this on clothes, weeks, easy. And um, like I said, it doesn't overwhelm. There's this kind of open, airy quality to it, even though it is quite dense and buttery. When it's in the air, I think that rose which is not too jammy, helps to bring a bit of a freshness in it to where in the air it will not be overwhelming. So even though on your skin, it's it may not it can be kind of dense on the skin, but in the air, it's going to hang around and it's going to do that all night long. It will be smelled mm. all night. Um, yeah, that's performance. So uh, for who's wearing this fragrance again, a little expensive. So unless you got it like that, I can't say run out and get it. Uh, Again, upper 20s and higher. Uh, but in terms of who's actually going to appreciate the scent, even though it is an accessible oud, it's still oud, which is not everybody's cup of tea, especially if you've never smelled it before. It will smell strange to some who've never smelled oud. Um, if you smell Tom Ford oud wood, it doesn't smell like anything like it. But if you can appreciate the oud and oud wood, and I use oud lightly in that scent because it is similar to this. It is that very westernized American kind of medicinal, soft, you know, supplemental oud, I would say. That's the kind of vibe you'll get here, which means that if you like that, you'll probably like this as well. Um, but it is more powerful, more potent than that. I think it has more personality in some ways. So um, the slightly, you know, upper 20s, lower 30s and up are going to appreciate that type of personality a little bit more. Very luxurious. In terms of sprays, I don't need much. Again, it's quite powerful. But because it doesn't overwhelm in the air too much, I can easily get away with a minimum of four. Usually I'll do maybe three at minimum for some sense. This one's easy for I could do one, two and then three, four. And I'm usually good, especially with an open collar. If I'm going to be outside, I could easily get up to maybe six, seven. And I'd be comfortable with that because of the way it hangs in the air. Doesn't overwhelm, but it is present. So I think this is a total hitter. Oud Galore from Chris Collins. Mm, that's a good one. I, I believe I did a, he gave me some samples and I was sampling stuff and I kind of taught people and it, it is a really good wearable rose oud. And mm. I am a fan of oud, especially real oud. So mm. since we're going to go rose oud, I'm willing to go rose oud. Yes. So as my brother Justin was saying, I'm going to be frank with a lot of you all. A lot of y'all haven't experienced 
on average, haven't experienced real oud. Mm-hmm. Those Montals and all, I'm talking real oud. Real oud yeah. is multifaceted. Yeah. You can wear it by itself. Yeah. If I gave you like some aged Cambodian oud just to wear on its own, you would swear that rose was in there, raspberry, mm-hmm. some kind of red berries. You would say it was dry woody, maybe a little bit earthy, but not too much. Nothing barnyard. You would say, oh, it's probably some patchouli in it. It will constantly change. That's how it is. For those of you getting into real oud, I would suggest Cambodian or Thai is a little bit more wearable. Don't jump into Indian or mm-hmm. Assam oud because mm-hmm. that gets more earthy and hay-like where yeah. you get start getting the barnyard facets. This fragrance here is a beautiful intoxicating rose oud when you talk about romance this is dark mysterious and bewitching oh this is absolutely enchanting and you cannot when i say you spray it you're not going to be able to stop smelling yourself this is one of the better rose ouds from the house who does a lot and i mean a lot of rose oud fragrances this smells like a rosé wine. Mm. And that's because of the use of Cambodian oud. It's very redberry, fruity, ambery, woody. Then you have two types of roses in there, very bright, fruity, some saffron, a little bit of musk, I believe some um some cyprioles in there also mm. adding to the woodiness of it. This is 10 out of 10 rose oud fragrance for me. This is from the House of Bodicea, the Victorious. Ooh. This is Dasmin. Now, this mm. is outstanding. Mm. My God. When you want to be a showstopper, when you want to be dressed up, if you want to go on a date and really command the room with your date, like really impress, mm. this is one that will absolute. You talking about a neck nibbler? Somebody who <laughs> wants to get... This is a neck nibbler fragrance. Absolutely. If it is, it is, it is unmistakable. A 10 out of 10 rose oud fragrance. Nothing barnyard about it. It's not overly dark or smoky. It is a perfect blend and one of the best rose fragrances from the house. Um, occasions. This is almost too fancy. I don't mm. want to wear this too casual, but again, culture matters. If we're in the Middle East, this is signature scent. Yeah. Over here, I mean, this, it has signature scent potential. I would wear this year round. It doesn't matter what season it is. Now, would I, I like to wear this more on dates or at night or dressed up or formal or dressed casual, but you can dress this down. You want to wear rose oud? Put this on. It just, mm. it to me, is signature scent worthy. It's really expensive, though, extremely. Mm. Um, projection longevity. It's not a room filler. The scent trail is absolutely bananas. So when I say like pushing across if i'm wearing it four sprays you might not smell me all the way over there but when i walk by you from here to over there you you're gonna pick up the trail it's gonna leave a beautiful and then it's just so silky smooth unmistakable compliment rating and compliment factor this is a 10 out of 10 for compliments it, mm. it, it just is it is a gorgeous beautiful unisex rose oud fragrance it just Everything about it is perfection. Um, type of person is for it's expensive. I'm going 30 and up. Mm-hmm. I believe it's like a 400 500 plus dollar bottle of fragrance. So it's rather expensive, but real oud costs more than gold per weight. So yeah, when you think you're getting real oud on a hundred dollar fragrance, just use a little <laughs> use a little bit of logic. Just yeah. a little bit of logic on that. Um, so that's and how to wear this again on a date, maybe two or three. Because on a date, really, once you smell you one time, it doesn't matter. It's already sent memory at that point. Now, mm-hmm. even if it, I actually want it to go away because I want you to get closer and smell what you smelled when you first smelt me. So mm-hmm. it's some it's some gamemanship with that. Um, but I do no more than four. If I'm at a gala, I might go six or eight because it's not a powerful. I have other powerful rose ouds. It's not extremely powerful, but it's one that I get everywhere eight plus hours on. So that is from the House of Bodicea, the Victorious, and that's Dasmin. Oh man, I gotta admit, I'm I'm way behind on the house. I've smelled a couple of them, the, um, <sighs> but that one is definitely not one I've checked out yet. Christian Provenzano mm-hmm. is a when you talk about rose oud beauty romance, it, it, 
Yeah. Talented yeah, he, he is amazing. He is yeah. very talented, extremely talented. Mm. So so we're now at the halfway point. Halfway point, point. yes, indeed. Halfway point. Real quick, let's take a poll, people. Take a poll. Money in the chat for Justin. Fire in the chat for me. We have 293 in the chat. Don't forget to hit, the, hit those like buttons. Let's yes. go, people. Let's go. Let's it's get free. it. Okay. So I'm going to have to start it off at number five. I hate mm -hmm. going first because you it's competitive. Yes. But we're going to go <laughs> ahead and, and do it. So starting off at my number five, this is absolutely just an aphrodisiac of a smell. When you hmm. talk about intoxicating, when you're talking about I can't stop smelling it, there's a reason why you cannot stop smelling this particular fragrance, and I will get into that. This is smooth, buttery, unisex, cozy, and warm. Mm. This is one date night scent. If you're in a controlled environment, you can wear this year round. This is from the house of Initio. This is mm. absolute Afro KG. Okay. Act. It's in the name. Listen, there's a reason why you can't stop smelling it. Now, it has vanilla in here. Okay. It has a nice enriching vanilla. Vanilla is an aphrodisiac within itself. It has a leather accord in here. Okay. So we're going to get a slightly some animalics. We're going to get some, maybe some patchouli in there. Just create the leather accord because no one's making essential oils out of real leather, right? So you have that. But then it has, I believe, castorium. Nobody's using real castorium. So you're mm. using this synthetic animalic nature of castorium. That's not, that just blends very well with the leather and vanilla combination. Mm -hmm. You also have musk. Musk is a synthetic. Very clean and very sensual. When you start talking about fluffy, clouds, cozy, cuddly, warmth, with that vanilla, makes for a perfect combination. Now, if you look at most places that say it has white florals, what I get is hedion. Mm. That's what I get. What is hedion? It's synthetic, basically synthetic jasmine. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like a, um, I'm trying to think what it's called. It's like your body produces it natural, like mm -hmm. a pheromone. Mm. It almost gives off this pheromone nature. When I say people love this coming off your skin. If you want to be a neck nibbler fragrance, you have to try this fragrance. Um, occasions. This is a great date night scent, but again, fall, winter, you're scarfed up, scarfed up, casual. You're just going out on your day to day on a Saturday. You can wear this. You can wear this a lot, um, but it's perfect on a date. Uh, projection longevity. It's not a room filler, but it's one of those pick a boot kind of fragrances. It's one of those wafts. Mm. You're just going to constantly get those wafts on it, but it's not a room filler. It's, it leaves a better scent trail. Um, compliment rating and compliment factor. If they smell it, they will love it. No one will not love it. Now, if you're a man and you say, I don't like vanillas, understandable, but most of my channel is made up of men um, and women love the smell of it. Take that for whatever you want to take with it. Women love the smell, but do stuff for yourself. Wear what you like to wear. I'm not telling you what to do, but this is a unisex scent like most vanillas are. Uh, age bracket, I would I mean, I would say 25 and up. It's a very playful scent. It's easy to wear, not overly animalic. It just, you cannot stop sniffing it. And how to wear this, sometimes I go six to eight sprays on this, depending on. If I'm going to the movies, I might go four because I'm in close proximity, mm -hmm. whoever I'm with. If I'm on a date, I might go five just to grab you from across the table. And if I'm like out in public, out and about, I might go eight if I want to be smelt. But no more than eight is how I wear this. And this is something in the house of Initio. And this is absolute aphrodisiac. <laughs> wow. Man, I just love that term neck nibbler. Neck nibbler. <laughs> That's some real stuff, man. Um, my next one up, I guess this is my number. Number five. Four. Five? At this yeah, point? five. Four, two. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah number five, five here. The sixth one I'm talking about. This is, I have to say, also a neck nibbling vanilla. Easy. Um, this was the first fragrance that came to mind 
when you told me you wanted to talk about intoxicating fragrances. This was the first one to make the list easy. And gosh, I, I have to say that I was lucky enough to get my hands on a bottle of this before, like right before it got a ton of hype. This was recently in the in the past, you know, three, four months. It got a ton of hype. And as a result, it kind of disappeared. And then I think it's been in and out since then of, in terms of people been able to uh, find it. But uh, I can't even, I can't even explain it. Even when I first smelled it, I put it in a video, a first impressions video. I sprayed it on. I think I put it on my skin, smelling it up close. And I liked it a lot, but I didn't realize how special <coughs> it was until after that video. I actually wore it a few times and found out how intoxicating this is. I, in fact, I this is another one my wife and I wear together. Um, well, not at the same time, but we both wear it. I love it on her. She loves it on me. I wore this one time when I uh, went to Chicago. I was visiting George Zaharoff and Ross was there. And this is when I turned him on to this fragrance. I, I wore it and the whole day, we're talking 15 hours. He was asking me, he kept saying, dude, what are you wearing? What is that? I see people already putting it in the chat. This is Vanilla Oud <laughs> from Vertus. Y'all already know. I knew I, I knew I was going to give it away because I'm too excited about this stuff. Really? I, is that good? It's it. I can't believe it because I didn't want to believe it. I'm like, okay. Mm. I, I remember seeing the bottles on Instagram for you know maybe up to a year or so before I smelled even a single fragrance of theirs. I was like, okay, the bottles are nice. They got some cool design aesthetics and you know real sleek and okay cool they're probably they're probably good at least so i got this and i'm like okay again that in that video i was like it's good it's good and then i gave it that wearing and i was just getting those wafts and i just I, it took me a, a few hours to realize that i was intoxicated by it because i wasn't bringing my conscious awareness to it i just kept getting distracted and like wait why am i distracted what was i just doing oh it's this freaking fragrance this stuff it is kind of what it sounds like in the name vanilla and oud yes but it's so much more than that because it's the texture of this fragrance that mm. makes it special when you think of vanilla we often think creamy sweet almost like whipped sweetness or some kind of dessert like feeling and that's not really what you get here it's not really that type of vanilla this is more of the pod more of the bean this is less gourmand for sure this is more vanilla as a spice because vanilla is a spice. So I get that mixed with the oud, yes. But the oud here is so elegantly done. I can't tell you if it's a real oud, um, but it comes off as a little transparent. It definitely brings a warm woodiness to it. It definitely brings this kind of rich grounding to the scent that envelops it, but doesn't make it too dense. But you have a lot of other things working for this. There is a touch of, of rose in here. So yet again, we have another rose oud, technically speaking. But you have some apple. You have grapefruit. Mm -hmm. There's there's a little bit of a bright crispness to the scent, especially at first spray. Almost mouth-watering. Um, leaning fruity, but not overly fruity, I would say. It does have a rich heart. And I think what stands out the most in the heart and what really gives it the texture I was talking about is the olibanum that incense. Mm -hmm. This incense just kind of sweeps up the entire profile in this airy, cooling, smoky feel that doesn't really smell like incense, but it feels like incense. It feels like that wispiness, the way it hangs in the air, the way it enters your nostrils. It's not just sweet vanilla. It's not just oud. There's something special here. There's also some florals in the heart, maybe some buttery orris, maybe some jasmine. Things kind of filling it out a little bit more, giving it some more core and rich base, as you can imagine, amber and musk and tonka bean and of course, oud and of course, that vanilla, maybe some other woods as well. So it is very much a pyramid. It is it's lighter at the top and heavy at the bottom. But that heart is really what makes it hang around and gives it that that special magic in the air. Um, in terms of occasions, I would wear this. Usually cooler months, fall, winter, I think it's really going to shine. You could get away with the spring as well if it's not too warm. This type of profile, I don't really crave until the sun goes down. Um, just the, the vibe that it has, I would rather wear this at night. It doesn't have to be over formal. Um, this could be kind of a casual night out. 
if you're asking me. This could be a casual date night if you want that kind of vibe. If you mm. want to impress in a way that feels a little classy, but not necessarily having to go to a classy environment, I think this would work just fine. Um, I don't think I would wear it in a t-shirt and jeans, to be honest, but it doesn't have to be suit and tie either. Um, performance, I love that this doesn't overwhelm. Kind of similar to what I was talking about with Ugalore. It has a presence. It is undeniable in the air, but it does not overwhelm. And again, I think it's that texture that helps it. It kind of just, it spaces it out a bit so it's not too rich and it doesn't just grab people by the face. So you can easily um, get away with, uh, you know, wearing this to, you know, any type of occasion where you're, you know, you don't want to overwhelm or anything like that. And again, it's as a result of that, it will last me a good eight, nine, 10 hours easy. Again, I'm not really worried about it because when I put it on at night, I know I'm not going to be up for the next 12 hours. I will be going to bed at some point within that period of time. So it's going to last until I'm going to sleep. And if you need it to last longer than that, I don't know what you're doing. Um, I don't know if you like doing things in your sleep, if you're like sleepwalking and going down to the strip club in your sleep and you just want to smell good, then that's a whole nother problem. You got to deal with that. But it'll be with you if you really care. It, you will still smell like vanilla oud. Um, in terms of compliment factor, this is high. This is definitely one that I've gotten some really good feedback on. Another one that I might wear out to my performances, which has uh, worked for me well. Um, I've worn this just me and Grace will go to like a party or something like that and I hug, you know, friends and oh my gosh, you smell so amazing. And I have worn, you know, worn it dressed up a little bit more um, to, you know, special events and things like that. And I've gotten a lot of really great feedback on this one. Um, in terms of demographic, depending on where you get it, because usually, at least at the time when I when I got my bottle and people were talking about it, it wasn't that expensive. I think it was maybe just under 200 for a hundred milliliter, which I think is a good price. It's a good value as long as you've smelled it before and you love it and you think it's worth that price. Um, however, now I, I haven't actually looked, so I can't speak for it. I don't know what the price is now. If it's gone up, which it's very possible, you know, for that reason, I would say, you know, the 30 plus guy is probably going to value this a little bit higher just because of that price point. But if it's not exceedingly high at this point, I think that, you know, again, even the mid twenties guy, because again, vanilla is still at the heart here. Vanilla is still present. And I think vanilla is a very accessible note for anyone really. Um, especially, uh, well, I know some guys don't really love to smell sweet, but this is not like dessert sweet. So don't get me wrong about that. And for that reason, I think 25 and up can easily wear it. But it does have a little bit of a classiness that I think the 30 plus guy or anyone, woman too, this is perfectly unisex, uh, the 30 plus person will really appreciate. Um, and again, performance, because it, it does hang in the air, it does last on me as longer than I needed to. Three to five sprays is all I really need. Again, depending on where I'm going, if I'm just going to be out with grace, if we're going out to dinner or something like that, three, four max, maybe if I will be out a little bit longer for the evening, maybe with friends, maybe we'll, we will be outdoors. I could probably get away with five, six and it still won't overwhelm. So as long as it's not too hot, I think it does great. But man, yeah, you guys already know I turned some of y'all onto this already. You picked it up. I know other reviewers have been talking about it. Mm. I do have to say, I think the hype is real. If you're asking me, I don't always say that, but this stuff is special. There's something about it that just took me. Mm. That's a that's a strong number five. Is it discontinued or why is it so hard to find? What's what's the deal? I think with it just it just started selling out. Everybody was scooping it up mm. really quick all at once. What's the price uh, point on that for the people who might want to know? Well, again, the last well, time I original price point. Yeah, the original what I saw. I remember when I was talking with Ross, because after he saw me, he got his nose on it. He was hooked by it. He had to get himself a bottle. And I think he told me he paid about 180. You know, he would have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was sub 200 at that point in time. Right now, I'm not so sure. A 400 ml? That's 100 yes. ml? Okay. I mean, yeah. that's that's a good, I mean, yeah. that's, that's, he, that's a good quality he, price yeah, for yeah. most. Yeah, and he didn't, he didn't get it from the brand. He got it from right. some other stores. From, from the brand, it's probably going to be more, for sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to stay on that vanilla. So I'm at number four. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do that. We'll talk about boozy vanilla. So when you start talking about boozy elements and you start talking about, you know, rum, 
cognac. Mm. You start talking about dried fruit, something that's not really listed here. This fragrance is vanillic. It's ambery. It has sandalwood, very creamy, has some floral aspects to it, but very bright and citrusy. This is what 1270 wanted to be and couldn't be. This mm. fragrance has legs. It's not a room filler, mm. but I don't think vanilla really should be a room filler. Can you imagine like a room filler vanilla? That, uh, That's obnoxious. That, that is, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not meant to be. It's meant to be enchanting. Mm. Think of enchanting, bewitching, mesmerizing, mm. um, invocative, something to draw people in. And that's what this is. This is from the house of M. Mikalef. Oh. And this is Note Vanille. Okay. This okay. fragrance, when you start talking about vanilla, coziness, booziness, a fruity aspect, this is, when you're talking about spraying something on and you want to keep, you ever been somewhere and you spray it on your hand? Because you spray it everywhere else, but you just keep doing this randomly all day. Yep. You'll be in public like this. And then you would do one of these numbers <laughs> yep, yep. And, and try to smell it. Sometimes I'll be That's, scratching my face. Yeah, scratching. Making, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so quick, quick story. I wear a lot of my, I test a lot of my fragrances in the gym. Not full body, but I'll put like a little bit on pulse yeah. points. Why? Because I just want to see what it does in heat and what it, because it might go sour. So, but only put a little bit, just enough for me to kind of smell it. And I know that if it's wafting, then I know it's going to be a strong fragrance. I don't need to put a lot of it. So the gym, especially since I got a 24-hour gym, if I go at night where there's not a lot of people there, I typically test fragrances there. Hmm. I tested this and I just couldn't stop. I'm in the gym doing a set and then I'm, I mean, it's just weird. Like, <laughs> what is this dude on? It's very weird. But you got listen, someone we're, on skin that's helping him with his workout. So we're, like... we're, we're a weird bunch in this community. Yes. Very weird. Um, this fragrance is that you will not be able to stop smelling. This is a unisex scent, like most vanillas. So, men mm -hmm. and women, you can try this on. But because it's vanilla, because it's fruity, has some florals, but not overly floral, we're just gonna go with the standard that it leans feminine. That's just yes. how people read it. But to me, this is something that I wear, although it leans feminine. Why is leaning feminine a good thing for men to wear? Because women mm. are attracted to fragrances that they would like to wear. That's so right. I always say that fragrance, for real, it's 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 five points. It is it is like brushing your teeth. It is the mm -hmm. ending. You put your outfit on, you shave, you do everything else. Mm -hmm. You brush your teeth, you put fragrance on, you walk out the door. So it's to top off everything about you. It yep. gives you confidence. There's people who are dealing with a lot of things. My fellow soldiers who have PTSD. I, I, I you know, I, I'm with you, brothers. I'm mm -hmm. with you. And sometimes the sense of smell calms us. So it's people. It's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic could be a good um, word. It's a confidence builder. But what it also is is a conversation starter. Y'all mm -hmm. want to be told. I want compliments. I want people to smell the room when I'm not in the room. No. What you want is people to inquire. That starts yes. a conversation. Your That conversation allows you to exude your personality, be intriguing, where it can lead to other things. Business, a future date, a coffee date. This is how, this is part of the game. But that's free game. We're not going to get into this. Occasions, mm -hmm. I think it's a great date night scent. It's a nice casual scent. It's on fall and winter. I wouldn't really rock this in the summer, but maybe summer date night. I lean this more towards date night for me. I think a woman could wear it more than I would wear it because mm -hmm. I like other kind of scents that I would just reach for. And that's just a personal thing. Projection longevity is not a room filler, and I don't think vanilla should be. But longevity, mm -hmm. I'm getting eight hours on that. Uh, compliment rating, compliment factor is very high. If they can smell it, you're going to get it. Yeah. Um, type of person is for us for somebody who's – since most people who watch me are men or watch us are probably men. Um, this is for somebody who's confident in wearing a slightly feminine fragrance. That something that leans mm. feminine. If you are not confident about wearing a vanilla, then then it's not for you. So, but it's so flirty and playful. I think 23 and up. I think you can be 20 and you can mm. get you want to get a young woman in your age bracket, you can be in your 20s, 21, and still have them wear this. I mean, this just smells good. Uh yeah. how to wear this. Um, because it's a light scent, depending on where, where we're going. If somebody's coming over for dinner, I might do three sprays or two because it's going to be possibility of intimacy. You don't need to ruin nostrils in an <laughs> intimate environment. 
Yeah. And you don't need to spray all over either because you might want her mouth on certain places. Mm -hmm. be, use your use your own imagination on that. We're grown here. Um, but if you're going to be out in public on a date night, you can go five or six because it's, it's just not going to push out. But, you know, about five will get wafts from across the table. So that's mm. how I like to wear that. Again, from the house of M. Mikalif, this is Note Vini. Beautiful. And my number four. Yeah, five, four. Yep. I got a decan of that one and I got to attest to it. That's mm. some good stuff. And, you know, I love that you mentioned the idea of men wearing fragrances that women would like to wear themselves. It's these fragrances that maybe push that boundary, guys, mm. that if you are looking, not all of us are looking for those compliments, but if you're looking for them actively, you got to find a way to get comfort, uh, comfortable with those fence leaning fragrances, the ones where you're like, I'm not sure, maybe a woman might find this too feminine. That's probably a good thing. Depending on the woman, depending on the kind of demographic of, of women you're hanging around, I find maybe younger women might feel like, oh, that's not manly enough or not, you smell, mm. you know, there right. may not be maturity there. But if you're dealing with that late 20s, early 30s and up, you know, jasmine rose anything that's gonna lean that way is gonna be great so i love that you brought that up man that and is, let me let me yeah. also add on to that yeah. i would say sometimes like i have like a talic it's not coming out so I, or lyric it's not coming out so i'm mm. not gonna mention it those fragrances if i reach for them those are for women i've already established relationships with sure. they're not necessarily first dates so mm. also think about when to wear the right fragrance on what kind of relationship you have with a person and what kind of fragrance you should wear. So also think about that. Go ahead, brother. You're at number four. Yes. All right. Okay. So number four, this fragrance has the note of cardamom mm. and cardamom. I just did a video on cardamom fragrances that this note is one of the most provocative notes while being accessible all at the same time. There's nothing really about it that I think, the average person would find unappealing because you see it in, I mean, it is ubiquitous across so many designer fragrances. And if it's at the designer level, they're trying to make money. They're trying to appeal to the masses and to have a note that does that so well, there's a reason, right? And what it is about cardamom, as I explained in my video, it is that perfect blend of fresh and sweet. There's something about fresh and sweet, just simply that those two elements working together that appeal to almost anyone. Again, if you look at almost any men's, especially men's designer fragrances, they're going to have some element of aromatic freshness and some kind of sweetness, especially today. And again, there's a reason for that. And cardamom is a lot of the time to thank for that. Um, it can be, again, there's a fresh spice, so there's a cooling feeling to it, but there's also a bit of a resinous sweetness in there. There's, it's a multifaceted spice and it really does it. It make, it makes a lot of things very special, but this fragrance has that at the face. It also features some ambery notes. So there's a little bit more warmth here, labdanum, some vanilla and olibanum is here, but more in the resinous feel more so than the incensey feel. It smells, um, I mean, I mostly smell the labdanum, but I think it's the olibanum that really is bringing out the resinous quality, whereas the labdanum is also kind of resinous, but maybe a little bit more on the leathery side of things when it starts to dry. There's some woodiness in here. There is vanilla. There is patchouli. Um, and there's a nice soft heart, uh, jasmine and rose. And I think this is perfectly unisex because it's this beautiful balance of notes. This is coming from Fragrance Dubois. Mm. And they call this secret tryst. This is sexy. This is a fragrance that when my wife wears it and it's in the air, she'll spray it on. She'll come in this room here where I have all my cabinet, you know, right here. She'll spray it on. She'll leave. I'll come in to put on something and I'm damn. And I have to fight the urge to wear it because I always recognize it. I'm like, mm. she's wearing a secret tryst. And I'm like, do I want to wear that today? It's like, now I do. But it's like, I don't want us to just be wearing the same thing. Let me find something else. And then I'll wear it the next day uh, just to get, get my own fix of it. But um, yeah, describe the scent already. 
So I hope that gave you an idea in terms of uh, where and when to wear this. This is also kind of on the romantic side, but nowhere near the same as like an, an, a, a oud rose like oud galore we talked about or anything like that. There is um, something a little bit more sensual than just romance in this fragrance. This is definitely a cozy scent. This is a quintessential cuddle up, saddle up <laughs> kind of mm. fragrance. Um, it's it's kind of delicious smelling without smelling like a gourmand. So you could wear it in a variety of occasions. You could wear it on the couch, Netflixing, chilling in the dark. That would be great, mm. especially if you don't spray too much. Um, you could wear it on a night out, whether it be a date, whether it be just casually going to the bar, whatever it may be. But just know that it's going to be a bit more of a sexier vibe. This is not just fun and games. There is something that pulls people in. This is an attractive fragrance. Um, performance, uh, not terribly strong, I would say, which I think is fine. Because if I am going to wear it as something cozy, you don't need it to be the abominable snowman cuddling up next to your girl. That's you don't need that. That is overkill. So for me, I think I get, you know, easy six, seven hours, maybe a little bit more than that. It sits closer after a while, which I think makes it perfect to cuddle up next to as the night goes on. It makes it a neck nibbler, as EQ is putting it. It really does. Um, I do think that in terms of compliment factor, very high, especially um, if you happen to have a significant other and you get this fragrance, whether you are male or female, um, if you get this or you get a sample of it and you wear it, I don't see your significant other not loving this and telling you that they love it and maybe wanting to wear it themselves if they do wear fragrance. I think it is that special. I think and to both sexes, again, perfectly unisex here um, in terms of demographic, I think. Just about anyone could appreciate this. I would say 20 up. Honestly, I don't see a high school kid wearing this, but I say 20 up. It does have enough appeal to it. Again, that cardamom, which you can get as, you know, from YSL, you can get it from, you know, whatever. There's so many, you know, mainstream brands that use cardamom like this. For that reason, I think anybody could really appreciate it. If, of course, it vibes with you. If you don't really care for it, then it is what it is. And uh, for sprays, uh, because it's not all that strong, I could get away with more. If I was going on a night out, if I was going to wear this to a performance or something like that, I could get away with six plus, you know, anywhere from six to eight. That'd be fine. If I'm going to be in a closer quarters, then I don't need more than four and it'll be fine. It'll last me longer than I need to. And it will be detectable without overwhelming. So that's Secret Trist from Fragrance Dubois. Outstanding. I need to sample that. So there's a place for those who might live in the DMV, the D, which stands for DC Metro, DC Metropolitan Region, DC Maryland, Virginia. Um, go out to Tyson's Corner. There's a place. As soon as you come out of Macy's on the bottom, it's like a little fragrance place, and they have like a lot of neat stuff. I smell a lot of stuff that before I get it, but that's mm. I need to get my nose on that one. I need to get my nose on that one. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely an expensive house, so you need to save yes. up and prioritize how you want to spend on that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Okay. We're going to go with something very mesmerizing, enchanting, and intoxicating. Mm -hmm. Very masculine, though. Okay. Okay. Now, we talked about the beauty of Rose, Rose Oud. Mm. And I said the other one has a very unisex feel. It's almost like a wine. This rose oud I'm bringing up is dark. It makes you think, even though most roses used in perfumery are pink, by the way, but mm -hmm. the image that this gives you is like a very dark, almost leathery rose oud fragrance. And that's because some ouds can come off leathery, especially when mm -hmm. you start talking about Indian oud, spicy and leathery. Yeah. This one is from an expensive house. And on my March get set go. If you go to Fragrance Buy and get it right now, it costs two hundred and forty dollars. It is okay. normally four hundred dollars, and this is ninety five percent similar to a two thousand dollar Bodicea the Victorious fragrance. Why? Because the perfumer did them both. This is from the house of Electimus. This is Octavian. 
Oh, y'all, yeah. if if you setting on $240, you want this real oud, not this Montal, man. You want some, <laughs> you want to smell real oud. Blend it to perfection. This is one of, not Portrait of a Lady, this is one of my favorite rose incense oud fragrances. This mm. rose incense, it is incense olibanum. It's a, it's a rich rose. I get like a brightness, maybe a little bit Turkish. It's fruity. I don't get a jammy experience with this. Mm. Oh, and the oud is very, it's dark, it's dry, it's leathery, very reminiscent to something of Indian oud. He could have used Cambodian, but I get that leathery aspect, which I only, generally speaking, get from Indian oud, but it's not listed which oud he uses, but that's what I pick up. This is a stunner. Wow. Blend it to perfection. You can get it for $240 right now on Fragrance Buy. I hate shouting out these companies because they don't work with me, <laughs> but I'm going to prove a point. Yes. It, it is worth every doggone penny. You want real rose? Ooh, this is it. I'm um, occasioned this for. You can wear this cat. This is a confident man. It is mm. a powerful fragrance. It is romantic, but it's dark, flirty. This is everything. Um, so you can dress this up. You can wear this formally to a gala, casually, to a steak date. However you want to do this. If you like wearing rose oud, pick this up. Amazing. Very masculine. Um, projection longevity. Don't overspray this. You can. It'll probably fill up a room. Don't do it. It's better just to not do it. Maybe about three sprays. No more than four. Depending on what you got going on. If I'm going to a movie, I might only do two. If I'm at a bar, I might do three or four. If I'm at a New Year's Eve banquet party, I might do six because of the environment. And I don't think I'm going no more than six. That's me personally. Do what you want to do. It's going to linger on clothing. Um, compliment rating and compliment factor. This is it. Dress to the occasion. This is it. It's just going to get there. Again, sometimes we don't get the compliments on fragrance depending on how we look it. Trust me, mm. if I'm wearing this mm. and I'm wearing gym clothes and some Crocs, I probably won't get a compliment. But if I'm wearing a tuxedo or a tailored suit, I'll probably get a compliment. Understand the way you look. Am I approachable? Or have did I have a bad day and I just don't look I like a jackass and I don't want nobody bothering me? They're probably never going to approach me and say anything. But sometimes mm. you get people to say, smile, baby, you're looking good. And you'll be like, oh, man, that brightened my day. I've gotten yes. that. So, yes. so just understand how you are dressed and how you are matching your fragrance with your outfit also helps. So you could get compliments. I'm not guaranteed, but it has a very nice compliment appeal for the 30 and up crowd. 20s, mm. listen, forget about it. Don't yeah. even think about it. Just matter of fact, I almost want to go 35 and up. I almost want to go 30, 32, 30. I want to get up in that, like, upper. Your mindset is, like, upper. Um yeah. That's kind of person. How to wear it, already told you. And again, this is from the house of Electimus, and this is Octavian. Again, right now, 200 I was looking it up before I was going to talk about it. $240 on Fragrance Buy, when this is normally almost $500, is a steal. Wow. And that's my number three. I need to be real with you, man. Um, I have Electimus's discovery set. I got samples mm. of everything. And I just, I got it right here. I opened up my drawer. I pulled out my sample. I haven't smelled it yet. I sprayed it while you was talking. This is fire. 240 is a steal. Even if you don't. This is fire. You were, no, everything you said was right. This is masculine oud rose. This is confidence stuff, man. Sheesh. That's some good stuff. Yeah, and, and and so y'all y'all know apparently, and I don't. People have said it, but I I don't know this to be fact. I only speak on things I know. But people have said it is the sister company of Bodicia. and Christian mm. Provenzano, who does the house, also does this. So a lot of their fragrances are similar. And again, they have Bodicia has a fragrance called Nebulous. It is two thousand dollars. People who knows I trust, like on IG Larynx, I believe mm. is how you say his name. He and I trust his nose. I don't trust everybody's mm -hmm. nose. Yeah, he said, like and he owns both fragrances. He said it's 95% similar. Nebulous just has a little bit more oud. And wow. when you're talking about the most expensive ingredient in all of perfumery, putting more oud in it could make the price jump depending yes. on what you do. So that's understandable. 
That makes sense. It, it is a steal. It is a steal right now. You can take your time and buy Jeez. it. I'll keep talking. 240 right now, just you, Jeez. man, you might have just put me on. It's going to be gone in a little while. It's going to be gone, man. It just might. Yeah, we might have to finish up here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good lord. I mean, I I love how Ood Rose has has just completely just infiltrated this this battle. Mm. I mean, and it just goes to show, just like that profile is. There's something about it, and obviously it can be done in so many different ways. And there's a lot of ways where it's done very redundantly, and it's just more the same. We see that all the time. But mm. when it's done special, especially that real oud, which I can tell, this is the real deal here. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Wow. Okay. My next one up. I'm going to do oud rose as well. I got another one here. Uh, this is one I do not recommend blind buying because... It is very expensive. Um, I just sprayed it. It's all up in the air now. This, yeah, again, Oud Rose. Um, but I'm just going to say it's from the House of Raja Parfum, which does not necessarily give it away because he has a lot of them, a lot mm. of Oud Rose. And he, I think, has a, a special approach to most of his fragrances, but especially his Oud Rose, he does it in such a way. Let's see Balak here. Yeah, for sure. Um, he does it in a way where the way it behaves in the air is iconic to his brand. It is unmistakably Raja when you smell it. There is this core to the scent, but the way it moves, it can kind of evade you. If you go in up close looking for the whole scent you're not going to get it all it's not really until you get it in the air around you where you start to get the full effect so that's why especially oops especially with fragrances like this you cannot let the up close either on hand or on paper be the final assessment now, now that being said again it is expensive so i'm not saying you need to go get this you don't need to it's fine if you don't but if you're looking for some quality then I would recommend checking out United Arab Emirates. I mm, heard great things about that. From Roger Parfum. Now, uh, first thing I'm going to say about this, and this is just pure honesty. Uh, the house just came out with a new fragrance called Taif Oud. And it just they just launched it. Now, it's actually not a new fragrance. It was a store exclusive I'm forgetting which store now at this point in time. Um, not Harrods, something else. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I out. can't think of the name. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't think of the name too. Yeah. yeah, it came out, you know, maybe almost 10 years ago. And it was exclusive to that store. And um, I think Fort that's and, technically- Fort and Mason. Fort and, yes. Fort and Mason. That's the one. That's the mm -hmm. one. And I think it, it technically predates United Arab Emirates, if I'm not mistaken. So they've recently, and they've done this with maybe one or two others of their exclusive, they've brought it into the main collection so that it's available to the world. And that, that's the way that they put it. And so they actually sent me a bottle of the new one, of the Taif Oud. And I, I smelled it. And the first thing I thought of was this. I'm like, why is this reminding me of something? This reminds me of United Arab Emirates. So I put them side by side. They're basically the same. Mm. Only difference being Taif has a little bit more of a, an aldehydic quality. It's a little bit more open and fresh mm. and less dense. But the overall profile is very, very similar. So, you know, not to say, I know I'm not trying to say anything in particular, but that is a new fragrance. I know that's been on people's radar. Um, if you're looking at it, just know that they have some similarities within the house. This is one that that is definitely coming close. And I think I like this more mm. uh, just because I smell it more when I wear it. But the, the Taif is nice. It has its own place, but you definitely don't need both. If you got money like that and you're trying to get, you don't need them both. They're, they're redundant in that way. Anyway, what does this smell like? This is Oud Rose, as we put. We've been talking about Oud Rose, it seems, for the past half hour. But there's a reason for that. Stuff is just good. It is intoxicating. There's a sweetness here. And I think the sweetness is actually mostly coming from the florals. There is rose. And it's a jammy rose in here. There's a sweet, almost fruity quality to it. There's also ylang-ylang adding to that, uh, that kind of fruity floral 
feel. Um, so that sweetness does not come off delicious. It just comes off as like a, a natural floral kind of sweetness, um, but blended with a lot of spice and oud. You have a lot of cumin. Not, not, not a lot. I do detect a little bit of cumin in here. Not everybody likes cumin. Gives it a touch of an edge, but I think it gives it some personality. Also, I do get a lot of cloves. I see <laughs> just ordered Octavia. <laughs> That's number two. That's two of them. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they ain't wasting no time. But I hear you. Oh, I see Lavelle did too. All right. Hey, y'all, y'all gonna like it. I think this stuff is good. Um, yeah, so cloves play a big role here. Now, cloves are kind of a warmer spice. They can be a little stuffy to some people. You know, it's like the smell. If you go up into the attic, an old attic, and you open up a chest, like a chest or drawer or something. And that smell of like the wood of just like it kind of almost suff it's like suffocating in a way, not in the worst way. Um, cloves can be like that when used in overdose. Now, thankfully, they're not an overdose here, but they do play a role to give the scent some texture, to give it some depth um, in its spiciness. It's not just oud rose. There's a lot more going on here, but mostly what you're getting is these pretty robust woods, not funky, I couldn't tell you if it's like the most natural oud, but judging by the price, you would expect that it is, or at least hope that it is. Um, but there's more going on in here. There is some, again, other spices. There's some ambery qualities in here. Um, a little bit fresh when you spray it on some artemisia and maybe some citrus, kind of brighten it up. But again, I think that taif is a little bit fresher. So if you want a fresher, less dense version, go for that. Otherwise, this is this has some, some core to it. Anyway, that's the scent. In terms of when I would wear this, I find this to be quite formal. Um, I've dressed it up historically, usually no less than a suit and tie. Um, if you did it in a tux, even better. If, if you're going out to a place like that or if you have a tuxedo, that's cool. But suit and tie will be just fine. Um, and if you're going to wear, uh, this is mainly for the guys, of course. Ladies, you can wear this fragrance as well. And I think this goes for ladies too. If you're going to wear this less formally, dark colors black i think black is really going to suit this fragrance well uh there's something about the way that the color and the scent plays into the psychology of what you um experience when you smell it so i do like to typically dress this up in, in darker colors performance on this is great uh most of roger's fragrances tend to be pretty powerful in that they will stick around at least his oud scents they stick around but again, I think they're done with nuance. So it's not this haphazard just onslaught of all these ingredients. Again, it kind of plays. It kind of dances in the air. You don't get everything. It just wafts in and out. I like what you put it where you think you said it's like a peekaboo. Mm. It, this is kind of that vibe as well, um, which is, again, so elegant. It's not loud. It's not, you know, like trying to get your attention. And if you're classy, you don't need to do that, right? Um, in terms of compliment factor, this, I can't say I've gotten a ton of compliments on this outside of people I know, which is, I think mostly the case for a lot of people, uh, people who don't know you, especially in, depending on where you are in the world, they may not say anything, but again, still having that impact is just as important. Even if they don't say a word, I do know that I got this fragrance back in the fall, this past fall, and I wore it and my wife lost it mm. and at i think to this day this is still it's her top two for me of the, the ones from roger that i wear this is number two for her because there's something about it in the air that is perfect for this video it is intoxicating mm. um in terms of who's wearing this um i would say well, I didn't really say the performance. It lasts a long time. There you go. Lasts a long time. Has nuance. Um, who's wearing this? 30 up easy. This is, again, it's not cheap. I don't know. The, the. I think it's at least 500. I'm not. Maybe four. I think I may have got four. I don't remember. But it's not cheap. This is not just a throwaway buy kind of thing. You got to really research. You got to get a sample if you can. Even the sample is not going to be cheap. So. Um, I can't really paint this as a must try because of its price point. It does kind of create a barrier to entry. But if you are ready for some more higher quality 
very elegant, very nuanced, uh, special smelling oud rose fragrances, and you want to save up for at least a sample, I think it's worth it. Um, I would say um, sprays, I don't need much. I think if I, I think I may have oversprayed this by one spray one time before. And I, it didn't really make me dislike it, but I definitely liked it less than the other times I had worn it. And I, I was like, oh man, why am I not liking this quite? I'm like, I think I did that. I think I did eight sprays that day. And I was like, I didn't need to do that. I was going out. I figured it'd be okay, but it was even too much for me, even outside in the wind and all that. It was too much. So I would usually go no more than, you know, five, six. I think that'll be just fine. Um, it's going to be present. Again, it will be detectable in the air and it will be on your skin all night, even if it's not pushing off that much anymore. Anyway, hope that sums up Raja Parfum, uh, United Arab Emirates. Outstanding. I definitely got to get my nose on that. I definitely, um, yeah, I love and, of that. And you're right. Taif is just effervescent. It's, I almost mm. acting it to like lemon tea. Like mm. citrus tea, it gives me a tea like feel because I have Nardesi up there. I'm not pulling that out, mm -hmm. um, but it, it just has Taif. I think that's the best rose you can put on your skin next to May Rose. I think May Rose yes. would be the second best, and yes. then depending on if you want a jammy rose experience, you would go Bulgarian. If you want yes. more citric, then you would go like Damascus or something like that. Rose sure. Damascina. Um, sure. Okay, we're gonna go, and I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit. Yeah. And we're gonna that two hours. go. Yeah, we're gonna go into booze and leather. Oh, I don't think I need to go too much in depth on what this is. This fragrance has been killing the game. It is undeniably good. This is from the house of Zhirzhov, and this is Tony Iommi okay. Monkey yes. Blend. This is rum, passion fruit, some cinnamon. But to me, this is about some fruitiness, booze, and leather. But it dries down with some tonka and some maybe some sandalwood or maybe some patchouli, I think, might be in the base of this. It is just it was hyped up when mm. it first came out. Yes. Um, I didn't know if people was getting free bottles or not. I was like, eh, I ain't gonna get it because mm. it's hype. And then something I think I came across of it for a still of a price, and I said, I gotta pick it up. And I picked mm. it up and I've been blown away. This wow. made the battle. Cuba brought it up. I think I brought it up a couple times. On it is worth the hype. Tony Iommi Monkey Blend occasions wow. because it has a boozy, leathery. If it's winter time, see, I always feel like winter time. If you're just going throughout your day, you can get away with some fragrances, sweet fragrances. They just kind of work in the colder weather than they would in the warmer weather. So yeah. you can wear this kind of casually. You can, um, but it's a great night out scent. I think a great date night scent. A great strip club scent. If you're going out the party, I just think overall it's a great scent. Um, mm -hmm. projection longevity. I'm getting well over eight hours of this. It's going to perform. It is not a room filler. I don't want it to be a room filler. Compliment rating and compliment factor off the break. This is a 10 out of 10 compliment rating factor, at least at a minimum, nine out of 10. People generally speaking love the smell of this fragrance. Type of person this is for. I don't see nobody in their 20s wearing it, and I don't think no 20-year-old, 25-year-old mm. woman would really want to smell this. You're going to smell like her uncles in them. I just don't <laughs> think it's going to be what you're going for. Listen, it's okay if you're watching this for the entertainment purposes, but, you know, stick your sweet sense and fresh sense. Younger girls mm. like that, you know. But if you're somebody who just want to, you know, you're getting that 25 and you're kind of creeping up, then I think you can start playing around with some of this. So I think that's the age. How to mm. spray it. I know I don't go no more over six sprays, generally speaking. If you're going to a to a nice strip club or a gentleman's club, you can probably go like seven, eight. But I wouldn't do no more than that. But they, I'm telling you, a neck nibbling fragrance. People love the smell of this. This is my number two fragrance, and this is Tony Iommi Monkey Blend Special. Man, the hype on that has been palpable, and I have yet to smell it. But it, I it feel is, like I see more of it every day. It, it, it's a good one. If you yeah. like leather, if you like booze, if you like, mm. I think some cinnamon might be in there, some passion fruit. It okay. is a really, it is a really good, almost gourmand, but not really. It like teeters, gourmand, masculine. It plays around, so it's a very flirty scent. I love it. Okay. Man, you just piqued my interest. I mean, I've had a lot of people in my comments saying, you know, you need to get it, you need to try it. It's amazing, it's amazing. And I said, okay, okay, okay. But I think I might actually take the initiative now because this... You just piqued my interest. Yes, All right, Mr. Weedle. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, number nine? 
um no oh, no this, this will be your number two this will be your number two. two yeah number two, two. yes yeah. so we got two more um these last two i'm going to get away from mood rolls i think i'm done with that for today um but these last two will balance each other they're mm. going to be on opposite ends of the spectrum first one up i think uh, uh, some people might consider this quite feminine and i understand why i'm not going to fight them on that um it is a relatively soft scent personality i'm not going to say it's a soft scent as in like it smells unassuming or it smells you know like very timid and very um you know just like reserved i just mean the personality of it is confident but it's in a way that does not need to get your attention if it does get your attention you will notice and you will be comforted i think it's intoxicating in a way um where it is it's not all that provocative it will it's not going to make you scratch your head and try to figure out what you're smelling but it's just it might even be a little familiar to be honest but it's going to get your attention that in a way that's very comfortable that's very um just magnetic i would say this is coming from mikalev you were talking about mikalev earlier mm. Um, yet again, another one that my wife and I both wear. Again, some guys might find it feminine. This is called spiritual. Mm. And I have yet to try the rest of this particular collection, um, but I hear good things about the other ones. This one is really nice. But what I can tell you, this I can describe it pretty simply. This is kind of almost like a fruity jasmine. There's this slightly sweet, almost like, apricot feel but peach maybe peach leaning almost apricot almost like that stone fruit feel that is a little juicy sweet even a little fresh a slightly powdery um with vanilla backing it up this kind of creamy smooth vanilla and it's kind of a typical vanilla i would say um that whipped feeling version of vanilla the creamy delectable side However, what really makes this one shine for me, and it surprised me because when I first sprayed it, I was like, okay, it's nice, but it's typical. I've smelled this before, but mm. ambergris, real ambergris, I can mm. tell. The ambergris in this, it, it envelops the scent in this musky, slightly salty feel that ambergris can do. That's what makes it intoxicating. You would think it'd be the vanilla, or the you know, the sweetness in general. It's that ambergris working with it that makes it special. Again, it's kind of airy. It comes off light when you do smell it. You can't unsmell it. Um, but it's just enough to wear when you do get that whiff. It's gorgeous. That ambergris makes it sexy. It um, it's going to come out more on skin than the paper, and it comes out more in the dry down than it will do when you first spray it on. So you do have to live with it for an hour or two before it comes out. But even up to that point, it's very pleasant. I do think those first couple hours are when most guys will say, oh man, this smells feminine. It smells like a lady. Mm. And I, again, I can see what they mean by that. But especially when you are, you're a guy and you don't spray too much of it and you're around women, this can be what we were talking about earlier. That fragrance that catches ladies' attention in a way where they could wear it themselves but the fact that you have it on and the fact that you're hopefully groomed well and dressed well it is it's it's masculine in its own way anyway um we'll move into um when i would wear this so it is again a pretty light personality it's not overwhelming because it does have a bit of a transparency i think you could get away with it in the summer however this is not my first pick if you took that Hermes Eau Gervais and put it on the table next to this and I had to pick one to go out on a day in the summer, I would pick the Hermes, um, Terre Hermes every single time mm. over this, just as a, a daytime scent. But I think you could get away with it, especially in the evening. All the other times of the year, it'll be great. Not going to be my first pick in the winter um, if I'm going to be outside because it's going to get swallowed up by the cold air. It's not really going to speak and really shine as it should. Um, and in terms of occasions, I mean, any time, really. It's, it can be casual. It can be kind of formal. You could be chilling. You could be going out to dinner. You could 
it doesn't really matter. It works for just about everything. Um, in terms of performance, it, it'll sit on my skin a good maybe up to eight hours. I would say by that eighth hour, it's sitting light, it's quiet, but still present. And that's fine with me. It doesn't need to be uh, screaming because, of, again, this this uh, particular type of scent personality is not one I would want to be overdone, as we we're talking about with vanilla. Vanilla is pretty noticeable here. And when it comes off too strong, it's too much. So luckily, that's not the case here. Um, when it comes down to compliments, can't say I've gotten a ton of compliments with this. I haven't worn it a ton. I think I've worn it maybe three, maybe four times over the past year or two. And um, typically I've worn it when I'm around my wife um, and she loves it. So I know it's one I can put on that she's going to love. And I love it, too, if I'm looking for that. But, you know, I can't really guarantee what the compliment factor is going to be. But I will say, like, a, you know, like we we're talking about men, if you do, if you're, you know, maybe late 20s, early 30s and you want to impress a lady that you're with, maybe not a first day scent, but maybe second or third date when you're dressed up. Um, this is going to be beautiful, especially in the springtime. There's some about this. I think spring is really where this shines uh, really nicely in terms of um, I'm losing my train of thought here in terms of uh, sprays. Um, you could spray a little bit heavier with this because it is a little lighter. Mm -hmm. I would uh, generally go at least five when I wear this. I might go up to eight, but I typically don't need that uh because i i'm kind of situational with it i do think it could be a signature if you love it it does have that quality to it where it can shape shift it can kind of be this chameleon for different scenarios where you could wear it anytime but i don't wear it like that i have to be in the mood for it and when i do wear it um i don't need much i might be just hanging at home and wearing it for the day at home um I might wear it if I'm going to go teach. I might teach uh, some trumpet lessons and I want a scent that I love that's not going to overpower my students because my students go, don't give a damn about what I smell like or what I like to smell like because they don't they're not into fragrances. So I don't want to you know, have it be distracting when I'm trying to you know, give them some guidance and instruction. So I might wear it in a situation like that when I don't want to be super noticeable. But if I do get noticed, it's usually going to be people near me getting close to me. And I think it can be intoxicating. In that way, that is spiritual from Mika Leth. Mm. Never heard of it. Never heard mm. of it. People, I want to thank you for coming in. Is we we top three twenty. We got one more to go. And um, make sure y'all hit that like button. We're we're on pace. Yes, we're indeed. on our natural pace. So I appreciate y'all hanging around. Um, so let's go ahead and get into my number one. Number number one. I don't think it's gonna be no surprise when we start talking about intoxicating fragrances mm -hmm. again. Another house and another fragrance. I really put on the Fragcom map. I started putting it in groups. I was one of the first people to get it online, and mm -hmm. um, I got it immediately the day it went out and posted about it. And this is amazing. It's probably my number one boozy scent in my collection. Okay. And this is from Leando Leande Umudablis, and this is Vini Havan. Oh, this, okay. this fragrance, if you think of, of Creation E or Enigma and you added a little bit of chocolate to it, but you added more dry fruits, that's what this would smell like. Wow. This is invocative. It is, it is almost gourmand. The tobacco in here is very noticeable, slightly smoky, but not too much. Almost think of the tobacco in um, Tobacco Color from out of Dior. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. kind of almost cigar-like. Like a okay. tobacco leaf, a dried tobacco leaf. So you get that. You get dried fruits. I'm getting a little bit like raisins, apricot kind of thing mm. mixture going on. Some rum, some dry fruitiness, that that fresh sugar cane, because rum is made by way of sugar cane. So I kind of get that realistic rum sugar cane nuance in it. It's vanillic. It's fruity. It's ambery. Has a leathery undertone to it. For the most part, it stays pretty linear on my skin. It's not too many transitions. You know, when you want to add some chocolate with some booze, with some woods, and a little bit of leather, I just think you cannot go wrong. And this is um, um, Vanille Havan from the Ande Umidoblis. Uh, mm. Occasions. I think this is a night out fragrance. This is a date night fragrance. This is a flirty time fragrance. If mm. you're off on the weekend, I think this is a fragrance you can wear casually or you can dress this up. I wouldn't go formal with this. I think there's better formal fragrances mm. to wear, but I think this is a playful scent. Um, projection and longevity. Me, I get over eight hours on this. It just absolutely works. This is sexy. If I'm going to the strip club, I'm probably wearing this. 
Uh, compliment rating, compliment factor through the roof. Everybody who has gotten this fragrance off my recommendation or somehow the hype got around to their favorite reviewer talking about it, who picked this fragrance up, for the most part, everybody love it. You don't see a lot of negative reviews on this. So the compliment factor is very high. Type of person is for. Um, we didn't, this, this, I wish I did a better job talking about it. Is it unisex or I think wear what you want to wear at yeah. the end of the day. But I think this is unisex right down the middle. If you're a woman want to wear it, great. If you're a man want to wear it, great. I feel like 26 and up, you can play with this. I wouldn't go below there. It's not mm. too, it's not too adulting like 50, not, you know, sure. no, but, but it's also playful enough where you can have fun without it smelling artificially sweet. Okay. I don't want to use the word synthetic. When I think of in, Invictus Aqua and stuff like that, yeah. I think artificially sweet. Although yeah. there's some synthetics in all of these fragrances, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they have a natural feel to it. So I think more of yeah. a natural feel instead of artificially sweet. I love this fragrance. It is a 10, it is a 10 out of 10 for me. It just works. It's cozy, compliment getting. It just, it, it's again, I can't think of anybody who does not like the smell of this. And this is um, how to wear it. How many sprays? Uh, about five, five okay. to eight, anywhere from five to eight, depending on the situation. Again, close quarters, I'll probably only do two. You don't need yeah. no more than that. Yeah. Um, but if you're somewhere going out to a dinner, I think five, six, and even seven or eight, depending on what you're doing. And that's from the house of Leonda Umidoblis, and that's Vani Havon. Man, I've seen that one around uh, over the years. And just here and there, and the people who have presented it have raved about it. But I actually have not put my nose Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a few people like uh, LaSalle, like I'm going to put him up there. He said he wasn't a fan of it. Yeah. Listen, you're not going to be a fan of it. Everybody's not going to like everything, but also ask yourself this, and this is a question for the sale while Jesse goes in number one. Are you a fan because you don't want to spend your money on it or you just wouldn't want to smell it on anybody? Because there's a difference. Mm. I wouldn't buy Savage Elixir. I'm not a fan of it, but it does it smell good. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah. So there's a difference in how you would rank something. So just ask yourself that question. But anyway, Jay, you're on your number one. What you got? All right, last one. All right, man. Uh, so as I said... I wanted my last two to kind of balance each other out. Last one, which was spiritual from Ikalef, again, a little bit more on the soft side. Some might say feminine. This, I think, is undeniably a masculine fragrance and happens to be the only designer fragrance in this list uh, for me. And it's kind of surprising that it's here all the way at the end, but just kind of how things fell. Uh, this fragrance, it, it harkens to an older scent. It is a flanker. This is a flanker that goes back to a scent that came out in the early 90s. So it has a little bit of that early 90s, gentlemanly, clean fougere magic to it, but definitely modernized for today. I would imagine people might already be knowing what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal it. From Cartier. This is Pasha Parfum. Mm. I find this stuff undeniably intoxicating, similar to Egypt, which was all the way, all the way back in number 10. Mm. Um this is that grown, sexy, mature man kind of intoxication in a bottle here. And again, they've taken the original Pasha, which was an all out fougere, all out aromatic, you know, fresh spices, herbs, um, oak moss and, and lavender and just all the classic ingredients of a fougere, that barbershoppy, creamy, fresh, fresh out the shop feel. And they took it. They kind of stripped away the freshness. They stripped away all the spice. And they just kind of richened up the base, sandalwood with some, uh, I think, balsam for some, you know, resinous quality in here. A little bit of benzoin, bringing that kind of like, you know, resinous vanilla feel in a way. Um, they added some booziness in here. Um, definitely some kind of liquor feel. And um, I think I said sandalwood already, maybe some patchouli. So it has this rich, warm, ambery sweetness mixed with the hints, the remnants of a barbershop fragrance mm. um somehow the barbershop feel is still here and i think it's, it's a touch of freshness that still lends itself to that but overall this scent comes off i mean i'm just going to kind of do things out of order here this is easy mm. uh i think this is easy 30 plus it's obviously very accessible in terms of affordability it's a designer fragrance if you buy it retail you're not doing it right and you're pay overpaying for it but if you can buy it 
discounted, you'll easily find it under $100. That's fine. But I do think that the scent profile is a little bit more mature. So the guy under 30, not really going to appreciate this. You're going to feel like you smell like your uncle. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that. Yeah, I think it's incredible quality. And I think that's pretty much across the board for Cartier. They are highly underrated in terms of the quality of their scents. And this is one of them. Um, I described the smell. I think where I would wear this, um, I think you could do day or night. I wouldn't wear it in the heat. I think it's going to be a little bit too much for that. There's that rich kind of balsamic sweetness that I think lends itself more to the slightly cooler or moderate temperatures. I would dress this up more uh, likely than not. doesn't have to be suit and tie. Um, smart, casual, business casual is going to be just fine. Open collar. It'll be great. But if you did dress it up, that's great, too. Um, I think um, performance is great for me, for especially for a designer. They do claim it to be a parfum which can be very open-ended and kind of ambiguous in terms of how you classify that. But I think it behaves like one. It does hang in the air. It does sit on the skin. It sits heavy on the skin for a good while. I get easy eight plus hours out of this and I'm going to smell it the whole time. And it gets classier and classier as it dries down. Um, for compliment factor, um, actually pretty good. In fact, I turned one of my good buddies on. He's a younger guy. He's in his late 20s. And I turned him on to this because he wanted to smell a little bit more put together because he smelled it on me one time at a gig. He's like, oh, man, you smell great, man. You got that grown sexy vibe. I'm like, hey, hmm. man, let me put you on to this Cartier. And then uh, my wife loves this whenever I wear it. She goes crazy about this one. It just has a grown up classy feel. You smell like you got it together with this one. Um, in terms of am I covering everything? I think that's about it. Other yeah, than I think you sprays. Yeah. yeah, sprays, you know, I, I don't need much. I think too much of this is actually obnoxious. I might go no more than five uh, for me, and it's going to give me the vibe that I want. So that's Posture de Cartier. I think, again, grown sexy, intoxicating with this one. That's the parfum. Yeah, that that is a, that is a good one, brother. Um, Again, people, listen, this was a pleasure. Two hours. Oh, wow. And we were averaging at 300. No one's pulling these numbers. I hope y'all took y'all pen and paper yeah. and wrote down notes. I saw a couple of people say, like, they was describing it and I can smell it. Like, they're <laughs> smelling the whole thing. So it's something, want, it's something that we do. We absolutely do that. Um, Brother, it's, it's been a pleasure. As I always say, people, I'm going to let y'all argue amongst yourselves on who won or who lost. To me, Fradcom won. Yeah. Collaboration of people, no issues, no drama, no beef. Two people who love fragrances, but with a little bit of competitive edge, because yeah. I still want to, oh, he pulling yeah. out that, I yeah. want to pull out that. And that's my intention of it. It's still to tap into people's competitive edge, but at the end of the day, this brings us together across um, politics, religion, race, creed, or pronouns. Mm -hmm. If you love fragrance, that's one place, like a football stadium, where people who hate each other Monday through Friday, on Sunday, they can get together and they can enjoy each other. And yes. that's what I want to bring with you all. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Um, Justin, any words Any words for the people? I mean, like I said, first of all, thank you all for, for being here and supporting uh, this series that EQ's put together. And it wouldn't be nothing with all you guys hanging out. So for two hours plus, we appreciate you all being here and, and just having a good time with us. And EQ, again, I want to give you uh, all the praise you deserve for putting this together, uh, for making it what it is right now. And I'm just so excited to see where it's going. This is what we need. We need more collaboration. So appreciate you, bro. Yeah, absolutely. And people, again, at the end of the day, we are not salesmen. I want to mm. be that clear. We are not salesmen. I'm just telling you, we're just telling you, I think I can speak for Jess on this, what we love. Yeah. Regardless, it's your job to sample. We try to give you the best descriptions possible so you can say, hmm, there might be something I might need to sample, mm. sample and figure it out. Now, I will tell you, Octavian is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> for 240, it, it, bro, 240. It's and I think um, fragrance by will take returns if it ain't your cup of tea. So sure. it's, it's it's a it's a it's a win win. I think yeah. when it smells almost ninety five percent to a two thousand dollar Bodicea fragrance, I think you can't go wrong. But I, I don't work for fragrance by. I don't have affiliate links. Um, they should cut me one for this. But yes. anywho, thank you everybody <laughs> who who showed up and showed love and showed out. We appreciate you. At the end of the day, love 
what you love. Love your fragrances. There's no point in looking down on the next man. Help the next man rise up, reach back, and uplift everybody. And that's how we really get along. That's how we grow. And at the end of the day, it's just fragrances, right? So with that being said, y'all already know what I'm going to say. I'm going to leave you the way I greeted you. And that's in the universal language of peace. All right, y'all.